Bhutan, Switzerland. Amazing single tracks, amazing views. I invite everybody to come here to enjoy this race because Swiss Epic was one of the best of the world. Truly amazing. You know, I, I spent a lot of time racing in Switzerland during my career, and I don't think I ever got the chance to truly appreciate it because I was, you know, focused and, and uh, you know, always in a bubble. But now I have the chance to really enjoy it and look around, and it's, it's unbelievable. It's indescribably beautiful. Good morning and welcome to stage five of the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic, the final stage of the ninth edition of this race. And today sees a slightly later start today. We're broadcasting live from Davos, the final race village of three. We visited Arosa, we visited Lax, and yesterday we joined the riders as they transitioned to Davos on the Queen stage, 100 kilometers yesterday the longest day in the nine year history of the Spa Swiss Epic. And today is the culmination of this five day mountain bike stage race in the spectacular Alps. We're here in the beautiful Graubünden region with Swiss Alpine scenery all around us. And as the riders look to be conquering the Alps after today's stage, they can certainly earn that title. And uh, today is a loop course exploring the trails of this iconic mountain bike destination as part of the epic series a collection of mountain bike races all around the world and riders have already completed the 300 they've completed 301 kilometers of the week's total 
359, 58 kilometers to go today, today. And uh, it's a climbing around about 1,850 meters. So it's still not quite a concentrated day of cycling and riders. Even though it's the last day, riders will no doubt be feeling the fatigue, but they will know they've broken the back of the race. But of course, they can't let their guard down. There is still 58 kilometers to go. And a moment's lapse of concentration can lead to a mistake. And all of those efforts, those 301 kilometers covered, could be, um, could be scuppered. So a few days of sunshine yesterday. Uh, yesterday, in absolute contrast. And we saw the likes of William Perry Factory cementing their overall lead over Singer Racing Team. Six minutes and 18 seconds behind. And the Italian pairing, Cerci and Tronconi. Great effort from them to hold on to their third spot overall. 19 minutes and 43 seconds back. Looks like the race is very much in the hands of Willier Pirelli. The Austrian and Italian pairing of Rabensteiner and Gersmeyer. Really, the pairing has, has certainly clicked because they have put the others to the sword and looked very dominant. They had three out of three after three stages. Yesterday, we saw a late attack from Simon Stibjohn from the Singer Racing Team. A very good tactical move. And they took the stage yesterday, but they are still only, only they're lying second on overall. Buff Megamo, another great performance from them yesterday. Bad luck early on in the week, leaving them several minutes down, but very much at the front of affairs yesterday. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz, the Dutch and Portuguese pairing. Their backup team, Buff Megamo 2, did lose some time yesterday. And there has been a bit of a switch where Buff Megamo won. Becking and Diaz moved up one spot on overall general classification. Still a very exciting day still to come. We expect to see riders fighting it out for stage on. It's a very prestigious day to win the final stage of any stage race. And we're going to be crossing down to the start line with Buff Megamo. In the morning here in Tafos, uh, Hans, ready for the last stage? Yeah, sure, why not? It's, uh, it's already the last one. It's been a hell of a week. It's been good fun and the sun came out. We have some good coffee. We still have some good legs, so... You still have some good legs, so that means once again attack mode for the stage win today? Yeah, sure, we try, like every day. You cannot show the other riders, you have to show them after, but of course we try to go. <laughs> and the good legs, yeah. I said it mentally before myself. You believe what you say, no? So I have good legs today. Okay, good. <laughs> Did you get an award for your downhill on a flat tire in uh, Flims? <laughs> yeah, the organization tell me I can come back next year. So that's, oh, that's did you get a free car for next yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So everybody destroy your wheel and go on the flat tire. You can come back for free next year. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you. See you next year. See you. Thank you. Well, contrasting images today, yesterday we saw an absolute downpour of rain. Some of the riders saying, that even the riders coming in saying that they'd completed the entire race in the rain. And uh, just looking at the women's overall general classification, DeVos Klosters women very much in charge of that in their orange Chivita leaders jerseys. And Janus and Marath looking to repeat that 29 victory. They have a 13 minute and 37 second buffer over MTB Pro merchandising team Chingalani. Burst and Piana riding with them to the line. And uh, exciting sprint finish. But the Vos Klosters just taking that, just pipping them on the post. And taking four out of four stages so far. So looking, but Burst and Piana looking to uh, exact some revenge on that today to win the prestigious final stage and Loza and Lacourt 42 minutes down rode within themselves yesterday team efficient infinity insure rare street coffee looking like they are very much in charge they're very much uh, look likely to stay on the podium and uh, the top three look very clear of the rest of the field the DeVos Klosters women Marath definitely sh showing herself to be the strongest in the race and uh, setting the pace really early on in the uh, in, in the week and her efforts resulting in that 13 minute 37 lead and uh, they all know they all they need to do today is defend and enjoy and soak up the atmosphere soak up the trails as we cross down to the finish line to somebody who has completed all nine swiss epics 
So now I'm here at the finish line, uh, probably at the start line uh, with uh, Sabina Kompassi. Sabina, you're the only one making all of the nines uh, Swiss epic. So uh, how are you feeling after probably nine Swiss epic and four stages? Oh, I feel great. I, I love this race. And uh, to me, it's, uh, it's the finest trails. It's the, it's the best vibe. Uh, yeah ever in, in a race, so I, I really enjoy it, which is why I'm here again. <laughs> yeah, and, and today it's a special day, it's uh, stage five of this year's Bar Swiss Epic, and finally the sun came out after an awful day yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was really tough, but uh, it was an adventure for sure. I never would have ridden uh, in that weather, so I'm gl glad uh, to have made that experience. And today it will be tough as well because the trails will be very wet yeah. and uh, the trail between uh, Gotschnaboden and um, Wolfgang is uh, very slippery. <laughs> okay, but have fun out there and we wait at the finish line. Nine time Swiss epic finishes on Vida Compassi. Thank you so much. Well, great to see Sabine Compassi back at the race and in the bottom corner we saw the team name is Danny Schneider. Danny Schneider is uh, the owner of the team and of course another rider who has completed all nine Swiss epics. Another rider, there are only three of them, the three, they call them last Steinbocks and they, the other, the last, other last Steinbock is none other than Barty Bucher, the 60 year old who has completed many Absecape epics as well. So a familiar figure at mountain bike stage racing as we look up at the skies to uh, see what the weather looks like. Weather has been a big topic of conversation over the last few days. We saw some beautiful blue skies earlier on and perhaps lulling the riders into a false sense of security because yesterday there was a big change in what the skies looked like as there was downfall, downfall of rain. And this does play a role with the trails. The trails, the condition and the surface of the trails change and make it all that more challenging. The uh, soil does get a little bit more firm which uh, gives the riders a little bit more grip, but of course then there are those super slippery routes. We heard Stefan Sam referring to them as sniper routes. And this is pretty much exactly what they are because uh, front tire hits one of those routes and suddenly the whole front of the bike washes away and before the riders even get a chance to hit the brakes, they are down. So maximum concentration required today on the stage only 58 kilometers to go as they are ready to set off on their journey. A loop around Davos and stage five of the 2022 Spa Epic, Swiss Epic is a jam-packed day of the famous Trails Paradise Davos network of single track. And we're going to be ending off on a, the highest of highlights and taking in many of these legendary best and best love single track. We're lining up on the start with the riders nervous faces a little bit of a buoyant mood today um, a little bit of a later start as we talked about earlier yesterday was the longest stage in the history of the race 100 kilometers 2800 meters of climbing and we will be talking to one of the local lads and Andrin Bieli has been putting in a fantastic performance riding at the very front of the race keen to hear what he has to say about the trails in his back garden Swiss Epic, Andrin Bailey, one of our local riders, last day, always something special. Yeah, for sure, you want to <laughs> push one uh, one last time. Uh, yeah, but yesterday <laughs> evening we didn't know if we could start uh, yeah. for this stage because France had uh, an allergic reaction on a bee or wasp thing. So, but he's feeling better now and yeah, we give it a try today, so yeah. let's see. Yeah, but Franz, you had to go to the hospital yesterday, and now you're here at the starting line. Yeah, it's quite unbelievable. The doctor said I normally had to stay 24 hours, but um, yeah, luckily the, they took care of me quite quickly after the start, after the finish, sorry. It was quite critical, so I needed to go with the ambulance to the hospital, and there they could treat me well with some necessary medication, let's say. I stayed there till the evening. And then I could finally go home. And yeah, they said if you're feeling okay to race, you can race. But 
I don't know what to expect. Just uh, to finish would be already a success today. Yeah, usually we hope we hope the best for you, but you got your nurse with you. So Andrin Bell is your nurse today. Yeah, the doctor also said it's important that's always someone with you. So a duo, a duo race is then better than a solo race, I guess. And when it's really, uh, w when it comes back, it's 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 a possible the reaction. Then I have uh, some medications with me to immediately take it. So. Okay. So thank you very much, Andrina Bailey and Franz. And good luck for today's stage. And the riders are about to start their final stage, stage five of the five-day stage race. They've covered 300. 301 kilometers already and uh, today's stage is a 58 kilometer route and in total they'll be climbing around about 1107 11,700 meters of climbing that's the elevation gain of the race and we're just looking at the descent very important to remember that they're slightly downhill 11,850 meters of descent today's day is a loop around the boss 58 kilometers 1850 um, meters of climbing and uh, looking very the riders will be looking closely at that first climb right out of the blocks a really challenging climb up to uh, the highest point in the race at 2321 meters and then just a short uh, short uh, descent gentle descent into the first water point where they will no doubt need to refuel for the uh, final run into DeVos and a hero's welcome in this final stage location, the race village that you see right now in front of you. Beautiful scenes of DeVos and riders just uh, disrobing, taking off their uh, taking off their jackets that they will be wearing just to keep uh, make sure they're not burning any extra energy with the uh, slightly fresh conditions we've seen. Nothing compared to yesterday. Yesterday the skies were very grey, very misty. Today look like the sun's come, coming out and the weather is playing ball. So we're going to be uh, just having a look at, uh, the, trying to have a look at the faces on the start line. You see Rabensteiner and Gessmeyer on the right hand side. They seem in good spirits, but they know they've still got a job ahead of them. They've got to finish the job. One day to go. And 58 kilometers, they know they've got to concentrate in every single one of those kilometers. Singer Racing Team in front of us, they had a great day yesterday. Simon Stibjohn, fantastic attack off the front and setting it up for his partner Martin Fry just to complete the job. Martin Fry, the team number 2-1. Both riders, in fact, formerly riding with the Bulls team, the legendary Bulls team, forming really the... The mountain bike stage race uh, fabric of uh, of the history of the sport and uh, no doubt learning those clever tactics from the likes of Carl Platt and Stefan Sam and of course Thomas Ditch. We'll be seeing Stefan Sam, Thomas Ditch and Carl Platt on the Bulls Media e-bikes. They are following the race. We have unprecedented coverage from a rider's point of view of this race. We'll be right behind the front runners in both the men's and the women's categories just seeing exactly how it all goes down. Hans Becking, thumbs up. The rider in the Dutch National Championships jerseys. And uh, we have Dario Linder on the line. He will give us a good, a good idea of what it's like, what the atmosphere is like on the line. And a bit of a weather update as well. Dario, um, over to you. Yeah, we're waiting to hear from Dario now. Uh, he is right on the line with the riders and a well-known expert in the area in Switzerland and a uh, long history of mountain biking. We're about to see the riders. They'll be starting in about 45 seconds. And Gessmeyer and uh, Rabensteiner resplendent in their yellow jerseys, very much in charge of this race. You can see Buff Megamo lining up, all ready to put the riders to the sword. Might not be, uh, might be too tall in order to take off those yellow jerseys, but the stage win is definitely up for grabs, and many of the other riders will be also having that in their sights. A big ambition for many riders to uh, win today's stage, a prestigious uh, title to hold in one the, any grand finale in a, in a mountain bike stage race. Today, they'll be taking in some beautiful views 
but uh, for the top professionals, it'll be very much uh, victory will be in their uh, in their list of agendas. And the group of professional riders, the UCI registered riders, set off on their campaign. Fifty-eight kilometers to go, two thousand two hundred. Uh, sorry, eighteen hundred meters of climbing, and uh, that will be a big challenge for all of the riders, including the. Uh, Back markers will be completing the race in more or less, uh, we could say, possibly almost double the time. The top professionals at the very pinnacle of the sport and uh, the amateurs coming to the race and dedicating months of training, months of preparation just to complete this and will be able to say they've earned, really earned that medal, especially after yesterday's stage, a challenging stage, 100 kilometers, not only challenging because of the terrain, but the weather made the made the uh, the race just that much more difficult some came back and uh, said <laughs> said that it was in fact brutal and we will no doubt be able to cross to dario to hear exactly how the riders are feeling this morning and the weather in stage five we're looking at the weather report from davos doesn't look like there is too much rain predicted and it all looks different on the mountains of course they are reaching Heights so in altitudes of over 2,000 meters, 2,300 meters in fact. So things could change at that altitude, but we're looking forward to seeing the racing and seeing how the riders are coping with all of those difficult conditions. We're lining up now with the Masters category and the Grandmasters in their purple Chivita leaders jerseys. Exciting to see how these, uh, these riders cope with the stage. There are uh, Certainly very accomplished mountain bikers. We can see, we'll be able to see Danny Schneider and Thomas Stoll. There we go in their blue. These are the masters category. The riders over 40 years old are able to compete in this category and a prestigious title to hold. Uh, Danny Schneider on the right hand side. And Thomas Stoll. You also might be able to catch a glimpse of another of the last Steinbock. That is Barty Bucher. But we'll maybe be able to just catch him out on the trail uh, if we don't see him, we'll certainly see him at the Absa Cape Epic in 2023. Well-known campaigner in mountain bike stage racing as we set them off on their 58-kilometer journey, returning to DeVos. In a few hours, we'll be able to hear from them and just get their impressions of this uh, multi-day stage race, five-day stage race around the beautiful region of Graubünden. Just a little bit about the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. Fresh new route every single year. The route designers design a unique test of endurance and resolve and skill. So the riders will be able to earn that finishers medal that all the other predecessors, all the riders of since 2014, will want to be able to hold that medal up and say they really earned it. And of course, not just from for the uh, athletic achievement, they will be able to take in the staggering beauty of some snow-capped, jagged skylines. And it's, of course, the perfect antidote to that physical and mental demand of off-road racing. The Spa Swiss Epic is a two-person team, and the top professionals and the ambitious amateurs alike explore some of the endless trails, some of the legendary trails. We'll see some of those trails today, and they stay overnight in double rooms in Rosa, Larks and DeVos for the most unforgettable Alpine experience. And we're down on the line with the women's category leaders in their orange Chivita jerseys. Adele at Marath and uh, Bettini Giannis looking very much in charge of that lead. Over 13 minutes up on their nearest rivals. Wust looks like she has recovered from yesterday's uh, efforts. And we had uh, some interesting wardrobe choices yesterday. We had a Dalit Marath wearing full rain gear. In fact, she had to stop and take, go into her backpack and take out her rain jacket and her rain trousers. And uh, we saw Deborah Piana still riding in her just just her plain jersey without any rain gear. So different choices for the riders, but today's conditions are very different. And no rain vests. Perhaps they'll have something in their back pockets, a little rain vest to take the edge off the uh, the cold, the chill on the descent, and. Uh, but today it looks like they're 
conditions say, looking up at the sky, they're making a weather call not to wear anything on the start. A little bit of a later start, not quite so early, not quite as fresh as it was yesterday's start. And we just caught a glimpse there of Kim Lacourt in her Mauritius Championship jersey as she rolls out at the start. They're lying in third spot, her and Vera Lorza looking to hold on to that third spot overall. No real threat to the overall podium, but today stage all to play for for the prestigious grand finale stage win as the riders leave the village of Davos. As they roll out of the village, we'll be able to hear pretty soon from the Bulls Media e-bike riders just what it's like on the trails. Unique experience for viewers to be able to take in the trails from a rider's point of view. We really get probably the best, apart from riding the race, we'll get the best sense of what it's like to compete in the Spa Swiss Epic. As uh, we have uh, looking, catching a glimpse of the top three teams already emerging on the steep climb. We saw the profile of the race. Very steep climb early on in the race. And we're on board with three-time winner of the Absa Cape Epic, Stefan Sam. And we have Dario being in direct touch with him and to hear exactly what Stefan has to say about what the skies look like and what the trails look like. And, of course, the expression and the mood of the riders today on the final stage of the Spa Swiss Epic in 2022. Just following the front rider. Right. Looks like there's a bit of a surge early on with the Delight Barath putting some pressure down and opening up a bit of a gap. They have an eight kilometer climb to go until the highest point in the race. And that gap looks pretty ominous. Maybe yesterday's stage efforts of uh, Wust and Piana playing a role here. Their legs might feel very heavy, very tired as uh, Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt are able to stay in touch with uh, the Swiss rider and the Italian rider, the Italian-Swiss pairing, very successful yesterday, holding it to the line, just missing out on the stage win, but very much in control today already is uh, Adelaide Marath and Bettini Giannis. Stefan, are you in touch? Are you, uh, are you in touch with us? Are, we, um, are you able to tell us exactly what the mood was like this morning on the line in the women's category? Good morning, Neil. Good morning, everyone. I can hear you. Yeah, it, uh, right now it's like a, a pretty tough wake-up call, like from the start line directly into a concrete wall, and uh, the leading team already putting the pressure down and just going their rhythm. They already have a, a gap of about 50 meters, and yeah, I think mixed feelings uh, today at the start line at the women's field. Of course, everybody looking forward to the last stage, which is also going to be a fun one. But I think yeah, after the long, hard day with the rain and everything, I think they can feel every every muscle and every bone in their body because it was it was pretty tough. And great to see the uh, the performance of uh, Piana uh, yesterday in the uh, in lying in second place overall and her partner, but um, Nina Wurst. What do you think uh, today's ambitions for these riders will be? Do you think they'll be looking for another stage, Stefan? Or are they looking just to consolidate, keep a good rhythm, and uh, ride their own race and see, take a, make a call at the end whether or not they're going to fight for that stage win? What, what's your opinion on, uh, on the tactics of today? Uh, I mean, it's the last day. There's nothing to hold back. And you always start a race because you want to win it. And uh, it's it's very early still, and I I think I think they still have to get into a good rhythm uh, up that long first climb, and then we we will see what uh, yeah what unfolds during during the race. Of course, um, the leading team of uh, Davos Klosters they are really they're so strong they can just go. Good morning, Dario. We can hear I can hear you. Now we have Dario with us. He will be telling us all about, we've been talking about the weather all morning, 
and uh, he's down on the line here in Davos. He'll be able to tell us, looking at the sky, having a local knowledge of the weather and, of course, the trails. He'll be telling us all about uh, his what he thinks will how things will play out today on the trails around Davos. Yeah, it's going to be a real beautiful day. So it's still wet. The sun already came out here in Davos. Everybody's excited about this uh, last day. So the trails are going to be slippery. Probably at the end we have uh, the Gotchna Trail. This is, uh, yeah, one of the slipperiest trails today. But it looks good. Temperature is a bit higher than yesterday. It's around 13 uh, degrees at the moment. But uh, it will go up because uh, the sun is uh, still pretty strong, even in Switzerland. So once again, a mystic scenery here around uh, the forest. So there's fog in between the trees into the forest. Down here in the forest, it's uh, already sunny. But riders have to first climb up on this first stage through the forest, through the fog, to the highest place of today's stage. Great to hear from uh, from uh, Daria on the line. And uh, he'll have been talking to some of the riders uh, down on the line earlier before the start. And uh, just uh, let's cut down to some to hear from those riders on the start line before the start of the final stage of the 2022 Spa-Swiss Epic. No, no, it's fine, but... <laughs> So uh, last stage, you're going for the GC for sure, but as well for uh, for the stage, the day stage win. Um, we will look how we are feeling today. So let's start the race and uh, look how it uh, went. Everything. So we are just quite relaxed, do our best. And, yeah. I've seen you in the morning. All looks good. Thank you very much. Watching the uh, riders in the next, the following start batches as the riders are seated and uh, during the uh, during the final stage we're catching a glimpse of the uh, mud from the deluge of rain that we had yesterday. Very different conditions we're seeing around the uh, Davos area and we'll get a chance to uh, get, get a much better view of the alpine scenery. Yesterday we're a little bit deprived you could say of those views that we've been craving and the views we've act actually been seeing in the last, in the first couple of days, we saw some spectacular scenery. But the weather not playing ball with any of the, any of us watching, hoping to catch glimpses of those alpine peaks. Just another start batch gathering of the 820 riders participating. We have 37 professional teams participating. And there are 50 countries represented in the field, amateurs and professionals alike. And you can follow on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube. You'll be able to catch all of the uh, all of the highlights, and of course you'll get a chance to watch the full broadcast on our YouTube channel. In the foreground, we can see John O'Connor, South African rider. He looks to be coming to be becoming an epic legend, having completed three of the epic series races three of the big epic series races the absa cape epic is a well-known campaigner at the absa cape epic the south african bike shop owner and uh, he's also about to complete his uh, his the spa swiss epic in 2022 and he'll be earning that epic legend medal and certainly an auspicious achievement to achieve just one of one of the finishes but to do three is a really a remarkable remarkable achievement for anyone in the sport of mountain biking no matter how experienced john o'connor an experienced campaigner having raced on the road in stage races as a professional looking to keep his career 
going in, in cycling, keep uh, keep riding. So we, we see that a lot with professional professional riders. They come back and they move to mountain biking. Danny Schneider is a perfect example of that. One of the last Steinbox using not wanting to still wanting to explore and, uh, and enjoy the wonderful things that cycling has to offer. So green fields as the riders set off on their 58 kilometer campaign today, 1850 meters of climbing and uh, will be looking to uh, enjoy themselves out on the trails and if you're watching today and you're thinking of participating and we want, would like to conquer the Alps in 2023, remember that registration opens on the 7th of September. Entries are sold out very quickly, so if you'd like to take advantage of that, get online, go on to epicseries.com and you'll be able to be guided through the steps on how to enter and set your diaries to remind yourselves on the 7th of September to register for the 2023 Spa Swiss Epic. Spa Swiss Epic explores some of the uh, some of the most gorgeous trails of the Graubünden region, and riders are treated to five nights of legendary Swiss hospitality. The accommodation is in double rooms in race villages, and there is dinner and breakfast at the race village accommodation. So the riders get a chance to dine out and exchange war stories in the accommodation, enjoying the camaraderie that comes with mountain bike stage racing and two-person stage racing stage recovery meal at the finish also just a chance to trade stories and stories that will uh, be told many many years to come and uh, also treated to door-to-door -door transport of their rider bags so it's pretty much what you could call a full service uh, race with pretty much everything you could ever want there's a bike wash there's professional mechanics and of course that finishes medal for those who are able to conquer the Alps and complete the 359 kilometer course around Graubünden and we set off again and Dario are you on the line are you able to uh, catch up with any of the riders what's the mood down on the start line at the moment yeah the, the, the mood was already pretty good in the morning because everybody's excited for this last stage and uh, the sun came out early in the morning the sun is here in the force temperatures are rising at the moment so everything is ready and uh, everything ha everybody had a big grin on their faces because uh, yeah it's the last day it's probably it's a short stage for uh, for a swiss epic stage but uh, yeah it's it's a hard one with some real nice trails and uh, only a real long first climb and the rest of it yeah it's like uh, mountain bike sightseeing around the force now we're just catching a glimpse of the profile of today's stage and Dario, you can tell us a little bit about the details of the Trails Paradise, the Davos single track, the famous single track. And we're ending on the highest of highs and we're taking in some of those legendary best loved trails. And these include the Panorama, the Fluella, Itchalp and Balgan trails. And each of them is unique and hopefully we'll get a chance to see them from the Bulls Media e-bikes and to experience them and the riders will be uh, enjoying the uniqueness of each of those trails. And But the real highlight will be the finishes of this race as they receive a hero's welcome in Davos and a hero's welcome certainly for these two, the yellow jersey wearers at the front of the race. We're with Carl Platt at the moment and he's riding behind Fabian Rabensteiner and in front of him, a man who's been setting the pace all week, is uh, Daniel Giersmeyer. Carl, what is the mood, what is the speed down there of the riders now, and what do you think the ambitions of this team are right now, the uh, team Willier Perelia? Good morning, good morning all together. Uh, yeah, it's exciting today because uh, I thought maybe they, the leaders are going to wait a little bit, but today again, no mercy. They went really hard from the start. First of all, uh, Hans Becking and Jose Diaz, they, 
der put some pressure on. But then Daniel Geismar and Fabian Rabensteiner, they went in front and no one could follow. The speed was so uh, unbelievable high and still, I mean, all the others dropped. And I'm, I'm with the leaders now together alone. So if I look back, there's a, there's a gap of 20 seconds, 25 seconds. I think the ambition is clear for today. They want to win the last stage. And I mean, it's also when you're winning the overall, it's always a dream also to win the last stage. And I think, yeah, that's the, their clear ambition to go for, for the last win today. And what a great way to celebrate those yellow jerseys with a win on the final stage into DeVos and a hero's welcome. And uh, we really expected a lot from uh, the likes of uh, Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Jose Diaz and Hans Becking having had bad luck on stage three, looking very good for a stage win. In fact, yesterday too, they were down to the wire with the team we see in front, Willier Pirelli. And uh, we also saw Singer. Singer, Team Singer took a victory in the end with a clever tactical move by Simon Stibjohn. And of course, some... Spending a lot of energy at the front, Simon Sibjohn. We really that we didn't necessarily expect him to uh, put in such a late surge, but uh, clearly on great legs. But today seems to belong to the yellow jersey wearers, looking to uh, looking to really show their dominance today. It's not something that we normally see in stage racing, where the yellow jerseys uh, make an aggressive move really early in the stage. It's an eight-kilometer climb up to the highest point, but right now we're able to see. Just what the gap is, we the riders, the yellow jerseys are definitely out of sight. And we're climbing now with Thomas Ditch, who will be able to tell us, Thomas, you'll be able to tell us how big that gap is from Singer Racing. And in fact, we see, I think that would be uh, the Italian team on third, lying third overall. They're looking to keep that gap to an absolute minimum. You know, we can see in the foreground there, just right up in the distance, we saw the Bulls Media e-bike of Carl Platt following the yellow jerseys. And Thomas, tell us about the uh, the pace right now, on right out on the trails. Yeah, the pace is really high now. Um, yes, uh, Yo Jazzy, it's uh, already 30 seconds in front of me. Just behind, it's a uh, stop and go team. And uh, and, uh, and then on the third position, it's a uh, two Italian team with uh, two Italian guys with uh, Martino and Dario. Yeah, the the pace is really high. Just behind me, it's uh, on speaking. And uh, yeah, let's see what is, what will be the the gap on top of this uh, first climb. But will be big already. Great to hear from uh, Thomas Ditch out on the trails. He's a, he's been a well-known campaigner in mountain bike stage racing. He knows the sport inside out. He's ridden at the very front of affairs at the highest end of the sport, and who better than to bring us this unprecedented coverage of mountain bike stage racing at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. He's right with the second riders on the, uh, on, the, on the stage right now. We would not want to guess too much at what that gap is, but it looks to be well over a minute. The yellow jerseys have flown, and all the uh, KTM Alchemist Attitude team can do, Dario Cerci and Martino Tronconi, all they can do is follow. You can see on the left-hand side with Carl Platt right now, the yellow jersey leaders. It looks like Gessmeyer is uh, taking a bit of, um, he's leaving a bit of a gap to Ravensteiner. Ravensteiner just uh, easing off a little bit, not wanting to go too far into the red. Gessmeyer clearly on fantastic form. And this pairing, most importantly, the team dynamic between Ravensteiner and Gessmeyer just seems to have clicked. We heard Stefan Sam over the last two days talking about that team dynamic and how important it is for the riders to click as a team to know exactly what the other's doing, how they're feeling. And Gessmeyer will just ease off a little bit, letting his partner Ravensteiner catch up. Both accomplished mountain bikers, both in fact are former national champions. Gessmeyer is the current national champion, he's the current champion of Austria in the marathon discipline. And Ravensteiner, the current European champion in marathon. And uh, we don't see those jerseys right now because the yellow jersey in a stage race always take pre takes precedence over any other jersey that any rider, any title might, uh, might be holding. Even if a rider is a world champion, 
when they're riding in a stage race, the yellow leader's jerseys take precedence. So that's why we don't see those national championship jerseys on these two riders in front of us, Giesmeyer and uh, Ravensteiner. But no doubt, Giesmeyer is putting out as much power as he can, striking the first blow on today's stage. It may come together. It's always hard to tell how the races will uh, how the race will play out, but we can see that the team that we expected a lot from today, the team of Megamo, Buff Megamo, not quite in touch with the lead. We're going to be in touch with Dario in a moment. Dario, down to you on the start line. Yes, and uh, at the moment we're at the front with uh, Karl Platt. The highest point of today's stage, it's not uh, far away, but this climb is uh, once again pretty steep, Karl. It is very steep. I can remember the climb from uh, two years ago when I was riding with Alban Lakata. And uh, I'm happy to be on the e-bike and following the skies. I mean, they're going at such a high speed. It's unbelievable. And the whole pack, it just spread it out. So you only see really own riders, own teams, single teams going on their own and trying to catch up to the to the leaders. And Daniel Geismeyer, he's, he's really putting such a big pressure on on this ride because I think he's super motivated. I have just yeah, a look back to where are uh, all the other riders. So Hans Becking, maybe they started a little bit too early. And you know, when you start a little bit too early to push too hard, then you blew your, uh, your legs a little bit and need to recover from it. So it's always better to find your rhythm first and then go fast. So it looks like the Pirelli guys, they recovered really, really well from yesterday. So they had a smooth ride yesterday. And uh, uh, even Simon Stiebiel and Martin Fry, they're even more back. So they went really deep yesterday. I think they suffered so much to have that stage win. And yeah, everything went really right. And uh, I hope they can recover a little bit on this first climb and then maybe come back on the downhill. Uh, hopefully they come back. So this is the impression of the first uphill. And I met uh, Hans Becking and Daniel Geismay right in front of the race on, on, on the start line. And uh, yeah, they seem pretty excited about this uh, this last stage. So another cow here. Say hello, cow. <laughs> I did say hello. <laughs> she was impressed. <laughs> she was impressed by you or by the leaders? <laughs> by the leaders, I think. Ah, okay, by the speed of the leaders. This is a Kyle Bart former Cape Epic winner for a few times. And this first climb, this is the steepest and the longest one of today. So, Carl, did you think that Willy Pirelli already in the first climb goes in full attack mode? It looks like, uh, it looks like to me. I mean, obviously, they recovered uh, the best from yesterday. I mean, yesterday was such a such a hard stage in the rain and they're in really good shape if you recover that quick from a cold and uh, wet stage like and long stage like yesterday it means you are in a really great shape it shows also to me because they could go even in the beginning a very high speed and uh, yeah they are unbelievable so we'll we will see how they continue now if they put the pressure on or it was just a test but i think I believe they want to win the stage today. So they're pretty close to the highest point. We can see on the right hand side. Then uh, we go along uh, the Hörnweg and then already into uh, the downhill. Down uh, to, to Gotschna. Past there, there's a long downhill coming. Then uh, down to the falls. And then back around the lake of the falls. A real beautiful place. Then into the Flüela Valley. So that's the valley going to the Engadin. We've been in the Engadin the years before on a yeah, Tormac you can, road. You can see the valley now. Ah, you can see the valley, exactly. On the I left quickly, hand side. I'll show you. Yeah. Look at ah. that. Ah. Look at this. So and the this other is the riders place are where the riders are going. Down there. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much, Karl Platt. Look at this amazing place. And now here on this uh, fire road, we can see the followers and the gap is already uh, pretty, pretty big right in this uh, first climb. Thank you very much, Karl Platt.
So we're back live with uh, Thomas with the Chasers. This is the KTM team and uh, the single racing team. Am I right, Thomas? Uh, no, you are not right, are you? <laughs> 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 no, Simon, Simon Sibion and Martin Pryor are really suffering today and they are, yeah, they are uh, really uh, yeah, around the one minute behind of me. Now in front of me, it's a KTM team show with uh, Martino and Dario. And just uh, in front of this uh, Italian team, it's uh, uh, Padri and Vincent from uh, Spar and Go team. Now, was, uh, now was so Fadri helmet, so Fadri's helmet. I had breakfast with these two guys, with uh, Fadri and uh, Vincent. And uh, Fadri told uh, Vincent, so go once more, go once more, then you're the engine. And that's exactly what's happened. It's funny to see that these guys are the chases now of, of the leaders. Because normally you think, uh, what does a, 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 a Swiss epic content eat for breakfast? That's a muesli or something like that. These two guys, they just eat normal bread. We had about three coffees, a bit of cheese, and uh, yeah. <laughs> As I told you, they went twice to the buffet. What did you have for breakfast normally when you race something uh, something like the Swiss Epic, Thomas? Uh, normally, I, I was eating like uh, the same, uh, not cheese, but normal bread with uh, some uh, jam and uh, some coffee. But uh, that's it. Some pasta the day before and the day, day before, but uh, only that. But, Bread and uh, jam is uh, more than enough sometimes. <laughs> so I heard it, something. It, it, I heard something about Nutella. Who's the Nut Nutella or the chocolate cream eater for breakfast? What is what is this brand? I don't know this brand. Yeah, don't know. Nutella. It's uh, it's what chocolate. It? It's cho uh, chocolate confiture. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I love it. Yeah. Sometimes it's yeah, just yeah, for yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, exactly. on the chocolate, it's a lot of magnesium, you know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard from Karl. So it's true, it's true. From Karl. <laughs> following uh, the leaders, it's getting steeper and steeper. So the impression on the camera, it, it, it's, yeah, we think it's not that steep, but this first climb, it's a uh, peep hole. Yeah, this uh, first climb is so, so steep. They're riding really small gears now because you can, yeah, you can see the steepness and they're pushing about 400 watts. So if you push about 250 or 300, you nearly stand. You're nearly standing, and uh, so. It, but it looks so easy with these guys because they can push so big watts. What's the temperature like on this uphill? Is it getting uh, freezing, or is it uh, still okay? I think it's still okay. It's it, it's getting a little bit colder, but the sun is shining, and it's not uh, getting too cold. So it's chilly, but absolutely okay. So we are having a short stage today, it's 10 now, so probably within two hours, riders, the first riders are coming and back. And with the chasers, with Fadri Barandun and uh, Vincent, I have an appointment at five minutes past 12 here. That's what I told them, so be back at five minutes past 12. What do you think, Carl, that should be, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible, so the stage will be around should yeah a little bit less than three hours i think yeah it's uh 245 or something like that and so it's, again it's good to have it's good to have on the last day not a super long stage because some uh, of the people have a travel day and uh yeah and you also want to enjoy you want to share your emotions with the other riders with the support crew and say thank you, have a beer, and uh, yeah, just spend some time after the race and celebrate yeah, the achievement, what they've done. Yeah, and especially after a stage like this, we had yesterday rainfall from uh, the early morning on. It was 
pretty cold. So how long did you take to warm yourself up, Carl, after yesterday's race? Oh, I think the, the, the people who watched yesterday, I think they, they recognized I wasn't that motivated in the rain. Uh, so I went back quickly to the hotel and I went to the spa, to the sauna. I went 25 minutes, got to sleep at 90 degrees, woke up and had no sweat on my body. So that shows how frozen I was. <laughs> okay, liar! <laughs> <laughs> At least you tried. Now it was it was really cold down here, so even it went even worse during the the afternoon. But uh, today, a completely change. It's uh, sunny and a bit warmer. What do you think about the trails, uh, Kyle? They're still pretty slippery, even the single trails. Yeah, we we are not yet in the single trails, but uh, what I remember from uh, from two years ago they can get really slippery because uh, yeah, there are some roots and uh, some uh, mud. Let's see, because it wasn't raining that lo for that long and maybe the, the surface and the underground takes the water in, it sucks the water in and it dries up quickly. But uh, yeah, we will see in a short while how slippery it is. Exactly. So there are some nice uh, trails coming from the highest point. We're at the moment with the leaders close to the highest point of today's stage going up to Gotschna, passing by there at the uh, lift station Gotschna Grad. Then the nice and long downhill on uh, single trails as well. Back down uh, to the force on the tarmac road, back into the valley of uh, Flüela. This is uh, the second high stage, and then from there on, it's a long and real nice single train back from the valley of Flüela to the force. Then they have to climb up a real short and steep climb, and then they take uh, the mountain bike trail down. We call it the Hügelibahn, down back uh, to the force, which is uh, a nice uh, man-made built flow train. Dario, it's great to get the exact precise pronunciation correctly. I'm glad that it wasn't left to me to try and pronounce the, some of the names of some of those uh, spectacular trails and difficult for me to translate and perhaps even difficult for me to ride them. I think that some of them are highly challenging uh, for any inexperienced riders, but with uh, for riders, mountain bikers with any experience, they'll be able to uh, really get the most out of them. Some of the most legendary trails all around the world, right here in the Davos region, in the Graubünden area of uh, Switzerland. Uh, the uh, 2022 Spa Swiss Epic Explores. And just through the gates, quite a narrow gate, we uh, see the riders with their wide mountain biking handlebars just having to pause a little bit to get through. And uh, again, Carl Platt showing us what the Swiss Epic is all about. These spectacular alpine views that we're getting to see now with just a little bit of better weather this morning uh, out on the trails. And... Uh, just an idea of uh, what it looks like to be a mountain biker at the Spa Swiss Epic. And we're right now on the Panorama Trail. There's a uh, section of about four or five kilometers of uh, single track before the water point, before they reach the feeding station. And it'll be interesting to see if the yellow jersey holders do stop and get some fuel on board or whether they'll continue on their campaign to win the stage into Davos. This is a tactic that we don't normally see in road cycling. A big difference between road cycling tactics and mountain biking tactics in stage racing. A really early attack like this on the road would seem like a really bad idea because it would give the opportunity for the other riders to catch up and, of course, burn some energy. However, in mountain biking, there is a real tactical advantage to attacking early on a climb like this. If you have the form, if you're a team with the legs to make a big gap on an ascent like this, what it means for the rest is that they have to push just a little bit harder on the downhill, on the descent. And of course, pushing hard on a descent increases the risk of a fall and of course of a mechanical. So it's all about pressure and pressure on the uphills isn't necessarily to gain a gap on the uphills, but to force an error. It's all about forcing errors on the downhill because they know that their rivals will push just a little bit too hard on those downhills just to catch up. And well-known tactic, and Carl Platt will be a will be very well versed in tactics like that in mountain bike stage racing, 
and just those subtleties can make a big difference to uh, a campaign if you're looking to hold on to those yellow jerseys. So maybe a move of, um, of attack on the face of it, but a defensive move at the same time by Giesmeyer and uh, the, his Italian partner, the Italian champion and the European champion, Fabian Rabensteiner. Dario, you're on. You're in touch with uh, Carl Platt. What's the uh, what's uh, what's the mood right now on these uh, trails right now? No doubt he's concentrating heavily. He won't be able to have an in-depth conversation, but uh, be keen to hear what he thinks of these of this panorama section of the trail. Yeah, we know that uh, Carl Platt is a real good downhill. He started his career as a downhill uh, junior uh, German champion in the real early days. Uh, Carl, that was probably around. Uh, 30 years ago, no? Uh, yes, it should be 30 or oh, 28 years ago. <laughs> oh no, okay, that's that old, it. Uh, okay, don't tell so, us it's too so, loud. <laughs> so, right in the middle of the Panorama Trail, as we call that one, this is a beautiful ride at the moment. And uh, Fabian Rabenstein always uh, looking back. So is the gap big enough? What do you think? Yeah, the, the gap is uh, quite comfy. I would say about 40, 45 seconds, maybe more. And this trail, it has lots of rocks and it's uh, easy to, to get a flat here. So I hope they're taking it a little bit uh, yeah, safe. Yeah, it, it, it looks from uh, from a perspective in front of the of the computer or the TV, it looks pretty easy, but these rocks, they're <laughs> Really sharp. Yeah, these rocks are. Some of them are really sharp, and, and uh, because you're pushing all the time, it's a flat trail, and you're pedaling and you're sitting in the saddle. You're at a flat because you're you're pushing, and you're yeah, you're not moving. Uh, you bump up, and then you can hit with your back wheel some rocks. Yeah. A few flat tires here at this uh, year's uh, Swiss Epic, uh, but uh, yeah, that's part of the business. If you ride into the high alpine uh, stage race like like the Swiss Epic, we are here on the fifth stage. This is the Panorama Trail above the falls with a beautiful view down the valley for all the riders, but probably they won't enjoy it at the moment. So if you're in a stage race or in a race like this, Carl, do you know afterwards anything about the uh, scenery or are you just focused on the trail? Uh, it depends really how the race situation is. If you're really on the limit, you want to push, uh, you want to attack or chase, then you don't get the scenery or very, very rare. I remember when I was younger and I did the first stages, I never saw something from the scenery. I was just focusing on the race. But the older you get, the more relaxed you get, and then you get the scenery. But it is very beautiful. So I'm enjoying it even more than two years ago. Yeah, good. exactly. Especially this year, you can enjoy it because you're on the e-bike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, it takes uh, some pressure off. So we're going back to Thomas with the chasers. And uh, as well on this uh, panorama trail, Thomas, the situation is still the same. It's the team sunk for it in front. Exactly the same from before. Yeah, the gap is, I think, bigger now. It's around 40 seconds between the, the yellow jersey and the following team. Yeah, and uh, it's really nice here. But you have really to to be concentrated uh, many sharp uh, sharp stones and sharp rocks and uh, even if it's not too steep actually and it's uh, it's flat you have always to take a look on, on the floor so it's always vincent torn at the at the front of this chasing group exactly yeah yeah they are yeah they are doing a nice uh, nice pace and um, yeah they don't lose so much time but yeah, they are making a good race. Did you have a look back so for the best chasers? So uh, who's that or how is it up to the third group? Yeah. yeah, the third group is uh, is 
hands baking with another team, but I don't know which one. It's two teams behind me, around 30 seconds. I know that uh, baking is, uh, and we saw some, some the goal, is really fast in the downhill, and we will probably come back in the, in the downhill on this uh, this second group with uh, with me. Exactly, and that would be a big advantage back into the Blue Valley because it's not that steep there. It's on a on a tarmac road. A bigger group is coming together, then uh, it could be probably able to close this gap between the first and the second group. Now we with Stefan Sam at the front, the ladies and it's Adelheid both out and the Dianas in the lead, Stefan. Yes, uh, if you can see on my camera, they're just escaping up the steep part, and I just stopped to uh, take the, the the time gap. But it looks like it's uh, yeah already already over a good well over a minute, and uh, the situation is like uh, Adelheid is definitely the the hammer today because um, <laughs> Betiana she was already like uh, shouting a couple of times yeah please uh, take it easy a bit take it easy a bit but still they are going so fast and uh, I can see now the chasing group of the two following ladies team women's teams and they are in the middle of the of the men's a batch and trying to w make their way up we are on yeah, 40 seconds already and still uh, probably 15 seconds to go to the spot where I took the time of Adelheid and Betty. Everyone really digging deep, looking good. It's such a steep climb. It's such a steep climb, but they're doing doing really well. And we are getting a quick push from Kim Lecour to make it around the loose gravel corner. So I'll jump just right behind them. And let's check the time gap. It's about 1 minute 15 already. So they really were putting so, the hammer down. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's something what I didn't think today. Because uh, Adelheid Morat and uh, her team partner have been pretty late at the start. So Bettina <laughs> just dropped in about 20 seconds before uh, the, the start. It's not a, yeah, a but perfect preparation for a race. Oh, maybe it's the opposite. It was maybe just the right push of adrenaline to get the legs going. <laughs> okay. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, probably must be. So they've been at the wrong spot early in the morning, came back a bit, little bit late, as we heard, uh, as we saw in the video with the Adelheid Borat right before the race, she was still wearing a, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, it's bindling in German. Uh, uh, yeah. Leg warmers. Leg warmers. Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> 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 this is uh, Stefan Sam, few times Cape Epic winner, right in the middle of the women's chasing uh, group on this uh, uphill to Gotchner, to the Panorama Trail. Daria, who you can see right now in front of us is the uh, is the Mauritius national champion of the marathon discipline, and it's Kim Lacourt, and she's just uh, doing exactly what a good teammate does, riding behind the uh, riding behind Vera Loza, and it's clear from this that we can see that Loza isn't uh, is perhaps the we could call the weaker partner with Kim Lacourt, just having a little bit of an edge over her, and uh, of course it does ebb and flow throughout the week. One day the uh, the the stronger partner could be uh, Loza one day, it could be Kim Lacourt, but uh, Kim Lacourt playing the role of just uh, hanging back and riding very much to the pace of Vera Loza, but just the odd quick push, just keeping her in touch with uh, that uh, pairing of Wust and Piana. Very important <clears throat> tactically to not let a gap grow, but of course there is still quite a big section of this climb to go, so staying in touch with the Italian and the Swiss riders is very important if they want to uh, contend for a stage win. And that'll be their tactic of the day, is to try and stay in touch as long as they possibly can to get over this steep climb, this first climb up to the Hohenweg at 2,300 meters. And then they can enjoy the panorama trail, the four or so kilometers of single track, bit of an undulating single track, 
for before the first water point and they can go on that slow descent down to the second water point and as they tackle the likes of the Fluela Valley, the Itchalp and finally heading into the Voss in 58 kilometers and hopefully they'll get a chance to see their name and lights again today uh, like they've performed well all week. These both teams have performed admirably but definitely line honors belong or the, the title of the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic is definitely looks like it's belonging to the team of Adalait Marath and Tina Giannis. Back to the men's category, the leaders on the day, a really uh, surprising early move from team Willia Pirelli, just going full gas on that climb and distancing their rivals. We expected more from the likes of Hans Becking. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz did put an early effort in, and as Carl Platt was saying earlier, perhaps just blowing themselves up as they hit. They will be seeing some of the, uh, some of the, rain, the effects of the rain on the trail, and just avoiding those deep puddles. Deep puddles, of course, spraying water up onto their bikes, into their drivetrain, onto their suspension. So just avoiding any uh, possible wear and tear on their bikes. They want to try and keep their bikes uh, in as good condition as possible. And of course, the spray up of water does wet them as well. So just avoiding any deep puddles. And of course, in deep puddles, there is often um, obstacles that lie in wait. And uh, when you see the surface of puddles, it's always hard to see how deep it really is. So just the Another very clever and almost instinctive tactic of a mountain bike stage racer to avoid any possible pitfalls. It's all about minimizing risk, especially at the front end of the field right now. Big move from these two. We would could say it was a tactical move to uh, put some pressure onto their rivals, but they may well want to keep that lead overall. If they have the gap, they may as well try and keep it. And we did see Ravensteiner looking back to see if he could uh, catch a glimpse of the rivals. We heard the time gap could be around just under a minute or so. No big, uh, no big gaps there, but we are getting a time check at the 12 kilometer mark. And we can see clearly that William Pirelli Factory are in charge of the stage. 30 seconds back to St. Moritz and KTM Alchemist Attitude over one minute back. One minute 25 and all eyes on Buff Megamo and Larks. Larks, the so-called local team, Bealy and France class having a great week. Some bad luck in the first two stages, and then really coming good the last, uh, the third and fourth stage. And France class the Belgian, and Bealy the local lad, 142 down. So if they need to, if they want to get on the podium today, they'll need to catch up with KTM Alchemist Attitude. KTM Alchemist Attitude losing a bit of time. They were in touch with St. Moritz earlier on, and the Swiss team. Swiss Italian team will look to close that 30 second gap if they want to win today's stage. Perhaps they've earmarked it. They weren't completely in touch with the leaders yesterday, so they perhaps had a so called easier day, the rainy day, the energy sapping day. So their legs may well be just a little bit fresher and could make all the difference if they're looking to catch on to the yellow jerseys. Yellow jerseys may wish to cooperate them with them. Might be a good tactical move for the yellow jerseys to wait for St. Moritz. They will receive help from them. Maybe make a bit of a, a gentleman's agreement that they'll cooperate until the line. And, uh, of course, the agenda of the yellow jerseys is to keep those yellow jerseys, not necessarily to win the stage. But we know one thing for sure, that Team St. Moritz are in it today for one thing and one thing only, and that's line honors. The stage win, to stand on top of that podium and to say that they have won the grand finale of the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. And again... We have the most spectacular views. This is what it's all about. This is what the Spa Swiss Epic represents. It's about conquering the Alps and, of course, not just conquering them, but having a good look at them as well as we see some of the most fantastic images courtesy of the Bulls Media e-bike and uh, Carl Platt able to follow on these downhills on his me Bulls Media e-bike. Just seeing some of those iconic little Swiss villages, so characteristic of the region as the uh, riders navigate these uh, these trails. Not too tricky. We've seen trickier trails, not as technical as some of the trails we've seen in the past over the last few days. And uh, back on the start line, we've got the future riders of the Spa Swiss Epic uh, just in training. It's a bit of a long road ahead for them. Got a few years to go before they can line up at the start. There is an 18-year limit 
no riders under the age of 18. So a few years to go for these little ones, but clearly very much on the program to be conquering the Alps very soon. At the start line in the in the interforce, so these are the real young contenders. It's a kids' morning. Oh well, now they have to go now. Oh, look at these young riders. So throughout the whole morning, we're gonna have a, a kids' race in a different categories. Down here, we have an invitational race. So all the parents. Grandmother, grandfathers are around. Not everybody's that motivated at the moment. So uh, yeah, look at the ground. It's still, it's still uh, uh, really, really um, dirty at the moment. So the next one, I just passing by, and my commentator booth at the moment looks so good, looks so funny, and. Uh, this is part of the Swiss epic as well. They're just coming by at me now. And it, I don't know the names, but I probably I can stop and ask for the name. <laughs> so there's a chasing group of two riders in the front. Go, go, kiddies, go, go. Oh, they went wrong at the moment. Look at this. <laughs> now they're back on track. Like they don't know exactly where to go, but uh, yeah, they're at the finish line now, I guess. Oh, I heard some screaming from Carl, uh, I guess. Carl, is everything okay up there? Yeah, yeah, all good. I have to. It's a really awesome trail going down here. It's slippery. The routes are really slippery, so I have to be very careful and pushing a lot because these guys are flying. But it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> The, the, the leaders are pushing really hard, even on the, on the downhill. So I'm a bit yeah, surprised yeah, about yeah. these two guys. Yeah, they're going fast. I don't know how fast it, uh, it is for the other guys, but uh, definitely they're not going slow. So, I, I heard another. Oh, oh. This is probably is the nice whole ho from Tomat. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Thomas, you with that chases? Are you the second ho ho? Yeah, it was me. I have a front. Uh, I have a motorbike in front of me, and I would like just to pass to show the the four team in front of me. So we're back with Carl with the leaders in this beautiful uh, scenery around the uh, Kochna border. Yeah, yeah. The force is some kind of great paradise. So many different trails around here. You've been racing here as well uh, in the yeah. year before. Yeah. I've been racing here three years ago in the Swiss Epic, and I remember this trail. Uh, it continues for a long time, and it's really difficult because you have to push all the time. But it's so much fun. Even yeah, it's for the pretty ride, fun. For the races, yeah. So riders are now at the coach station, at the lower part of the station. So the Swiss A line, as we call it, is coming down from here down to Klosters. So a man-made built uh, mountain bike trail with jumps, with and with everything. But now they're going. Exactly, uh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was three years ago. Now they're going to the right side here. You're not uh, going into that trail, you're taking another one, another nice single trail. Ah, look at this. Ah. Carla, I want to uh, ride. I really want to ride. I believe you, I believe you. You can be jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous about you guys. So we're going back to the ladies. And uh, we have uh, Stefan Sam in the front. Spinter Force close to Spettina Janas and Adelheid Morat. So Adelheid still setting the pace. Yeah, exactly. But they, they were separated by a little bit on the climb, but now they are 
making the way down the first single track from the top and it's uh, it's awesome scenery but it's also you need to be concentrated so much to not hit one of the sharp rocks what do you think about Adelheid Monat? So she was leading all the time. So this is the fifth stage. And uh, yeah, yesterday she had, so in between she had a break because she had to change clothing. <laughs> but otherwise <laughs> she was always in the lead. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But also, I mean, this is the result of hard work and, and uh, you know, dedicated training. And this is what, uh, what professional racing is all about. And at the moment, she's yeah, she's really on a high. She's on such a high level at the moment internationally as well. And it's no no surprise that she can lead lead every every day and do whatever she wants. So the K Swiss Epic as the Cape Epic is a team race. So all the two riders are together in one team. This year, Bettina Janas is together with Adelheid Morat. But Adelheid, uh, it looks like she's so much stronger than Bettina. Yeah, it might it might look like. I mean, Bettina still has to keep up, and I mean, you you must keep in mind that they, even if Bettina is suffering a little bit, but they are still already over one minute ahead of everyone else. So yeah. both are incredible shape. So it's a real teamwork here. It's it's really uh, important to talk to each other that they know how fast they're gonna be. And uh, yeah, we're back exactly. with uh, Karl Platz at the uh, men's leaders on this uh, beautiful down in from Gotschna down to uh, the force. Karl, you, you often, you often ride yes, yes. Uh, with Adelheid? Uh, no, so you... nearly never. Okay. No, I, I mean, I know her for already for a long time. Uh, we've been a national team for a long time. And uh, here, yeah, in the training camps, we rode together. But it seems like Adelaide is in a good, in very good space. So she's very relaxed and enjoying uh, cycling or mountain biking. Yeah. Definitely, she's enjoying the trailers around here in 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 the falls. So they're so so beautiful. So at the moment we're. Uh, on the downhill with the men's leaders. Uh, this is Fabian Rabenstein and Daniel Geismar. So, Carl, is it slippery out there, as, uh, as you told me before? So, Yeah, so in general, it's not that slippery, but the routes, the routes are very slippery. So you have to take them very careful. Maybe if you go a little bit faster, it's even safer. Do you know anything about tire choice from yesterday? Because it was so wet. So did uh, anyone uh, ride with, uh, with rain tires? I don't think so. Because uh, uh, it, was, it was wet, but yesterday wasn't that slippery. I mean, some grass uh, passages, they were, they were slippery. But in general, it wasn't too slippery. I think today on the routes in this single trail, you can see it's yeah. uh, it's more slippery so sometimes when it drains really hard it's uh, it's better than the day after or right after the rain because there's not such mud on uh, on the roots and on on the stones exactly so it dries up already so uh, so in general there's no mud but here yeah, on the roots it's very slippery because they are still very wet from yesterday, they've been taking all the water. Today, there's no water coming from the top. Just water out of the bottle for the riders. So look at these trails. This is <laughs> pure enjoyment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pure enjoyment. So, and you see this situation, even I get stuck sometimes a little bit behind the riders and then I have to close the gap. So if you have like four, five, six teams and you're hanging in the back, so you're always in danger to lose uh, the, dis uh, the distance to the front guys. And that's why maybe, oh, I believe Pirelli guys put the pressure on just to be safe 
and not risking too much in the downhills and just not always closing the gaps because closing the gaps always means a lot of pressure and making mistakes and also yeah wasting your energy so it's a big advantage for our general classification leaders fabian ravensteiner and daniel geismayer that they're all alone in front of this race with the chasers it's uh, still thomas uh, Deitch. so what's the situation it's still team sank moritz on second place thomas uh, still St. Moritz on second place, yes, but uh, many riders are coming back from behind. And uh, now it's a big bunch around the, I mean, not big, but five teams together on the leading, uh, on the, on the chasing group. So what do you think, this is, is, it, is it an advantage for the leaders to ride all alone? So, so in this big group, they always get stuck because a mistake of the, of the rider at the front. Yeah, exactly. It's always like like now you are stuck by a barrier or by some road slippery. You have to stop. Yeah, you have to now. go back yeah. again on the go back on the bike, and you have no yeah. no speed. Then the the roads are more slippery. Like now. Yeah, and we uh, call yeah, it the yeah. hunter. It's we an call it the Hunter Galère with Christian. La Galère, in French. Exactly. Yeah, Merci it's, bien. Uh, it's an advantage for sure to be uh, alone in front. Look now again. I uh, have to stop back on the bike. Start again to pedal. Sometimes it's even bigger to open up a gap to the front and to the back to ride your own speed because technical skills are quite different uh, even in a professional race like this so do they train technical skills especially for uh, for a race like a swiss epic where, where, it, where the technical skills should be so high Because we heard it before that the Swiss national team with the women's, they got uh, their own technical uh, trainer. So probably riders competing at the Swiss Epic should uh, get a uh, technical trainer as well. What do you think, Thomas? I think that uh, it's, it's slippery and I'm concentrated on the slippery route. <laughs> It was a uh, really slippery now. Yeah, you definitely have to, to be used to this uh, this type of terrain, but it's really enjoyable. So you still yeah, can really ask us some questions. Question. It's really strange. Uh, the, I mean, it's not strange, but it's normal. Um, the feeling here in the back of this group. It's always pushing, then stop. You got some mistake in front, and you push again. And it's uh, really, really clever to for the for the strongest team to be uh, in front alone, for sure. Okay. So now we're back uh, with uh, Stefan Sam at the front with the lady Stefan. There's definitely Kai Handergli effect with you. <laughs> no, no. Maybe more in the back. But right now we don't have the elastic or the hand ergerly. Um, it's more like a rubber band is pulling the leading team towards the finish line to divorce. Because they are go they're going so strong. And we're now in the, in the wide open uh, downhill. Making the way towards the valley. Ow! Oh, I got hit by the cow gate. <laughs> yeah. This is a proper Swiss cow gate. It opens up and yes. you ride through, but sometimes people behind the ride come back really, really fast. Yeah, now we're really fast. We're going 60 at the moment. So really quick. Yeah, the guy and the, 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 the women in the front, they're working really, really well together. Our light's still in the lead and uh, yeah, pulling her partner towards the finish line. Turning left now into the next single track.
Se... Dario, we're seeing some of the uh, most spectacular trails in the uh, Spa Swiss Epic, and it really is characterized by um, by these uh, beautiful single track and. It's exciting to see uh, Stefan, the, the pictures from the Bulls Media e-bike. Stefan Sam, three-time winner of the Absa Cape, a perfect rider to be able to follow these riders. And no doubt, no easy task and does require the expertise of a rider at the top of their game. And Stefan Sam has a, an interesting um, job to, be, to, to bring us this unprecedented coverage. And of course, with all the equipment that he has to cover, has to carry, and uh, the the Bulls Media e-bike is a very special piece of equipment that is uh, highly necessary at the front of to women's race. be able to bring us these pictures we see today. We're staying with the uh, women's race right now, and we have Adelaide Marath leading the way with Bettina Yanis just uh, keeping as close as possible and uh, just having a look now at that downhill section. It's clear that uh, we have a, a just a bit situation. of a lower pace. A new situation that Stefan will tell us all about it. Yeah, we, the group has come together. So we have three women's teams in the front now. Both other teams made the, or could close the gap in the downhill. And we are heading now towards the valley with the three contenders in the overall. And yeah, so everything is open again. The early attack was. Uh, was put to an end just now at the downhill. And it's slippery. The women's field, a few teams in the lead at steam moment on the downhill from Gotchner down back to the fourth. At the men's race after 17 kilometers is that the uh, Villa Pirelli factory racing is in front of uh, Buff Megano with a gap of two minutes and uh, 32. And as we heard before, uh, there's a whole bunch of teams together on the chase, it's ATM, the team Lux, the team Singer Racing, Botecchia Factory, and the team St. Moritz, with only a gap to the leaders around uh, 2 minutes and uh, 30 or 2 minutes 40 seconds. Yes, Dario, we saw that gap there in the uh, when we were following on the media bike with Thomas uh, Ditch, and uh, one notable point of that was the team St. Moritz have joined that big gap, or rather joined that big group. In fact, the big group have joined St. Moritz. St. Moritz, earlier on at the 12-kilometer mark, had only a 30-second deficit to Willia Pirelli Factory, so something must have happened to Baron Dunn and Dawn to have lost that advantage that they had there. Something has happened where they've lost that two-minute advantage over that big leading, big chasing group, and in that chasing group, Buff Megamo, KTM Alchemist Attitude, Larks, Singer Racing Team, Botechia Factory, and of course, Sunk Moritz. A little bit, uh, just trailing a little bit at the 17 kilometer mark, Buff Megamo 2. We have already just heard that uh, at the 22 kilometer mark, William Pirelli Factory have passed through that time check, and uh, we'll be waiting for a couple of minutes to see how far behind that chase group is. The chase group of around about six teams, and bad news for Team KTM. Alchemist Attitude, Churchy and Tronconi have a mechanical. Let's hope they can repair it as soon as possible. It looks like tire issues. We're going to go back to Thomas to hear down on the trail side. Yeah, it's a tire issue for, for Martino. He tried to repair, but it's not working uh, at this moment. They tried to put some more air in the gas pump. So the thing is that if a situation like this happens, if they have a mechanical, they have to fix it by themselves so they're not allowed to get any help uh, from, uh, not outer space, but uh, from a me mechanic or something like that. So they have to fix things like this by themselves. They're carrying uh, 
their own tools. And with back at the moment with the leaders, once more in this year's Spar Swiss Epic, it's the Ville Pirelli factory racing team. They're at the Wolfgang at the moment. This is the part right in front of the force. They're going down a little bit and then they're already heading into the Fliola Valley. So right now, riders are at kilometer around 24 at the moment, the leaders. And Dorian, we're going to be waiting to hear exactly what that time gap is and how much of an advantage William Pirelli Factory have over that chasing group of now only five teams now that we've just seen KTM Alchemist and Attitude drop back from uh, because of a mechanical trying to get air and sealant back into that tire. And in that chase group is Buff Megamo, Team Larks, Singer Racing Team, Botekia Factory and Sankt Moritz who also had mechanicals, uh, mechanical woes as well having lost two minutes. They were almost in touch with this leading pair that we see right now almost on their wheels. Only 30 seconds back, but something's happened to them. So they have dropped back to that chasing group. And the local lads of, um, of Team St. Moritz. And passing through that time check, the Wolfgang Pass uh, timing check at 22 kilometers. Our Buff Megamo, Singer Racing, and um, Buff Megamo 2 as well have joined them. And five teams in that group at 2 minutes 45 seconds back. Four teams, in fact, chasing William Pirelli Factory. Now we wait to see where Team Larks is. We saw some great performances from Andre Billy in the last two days, uh, riding with France Class. And yes, they've passed through at three minutes. So they're around about uh, 15, 20 seconds behind. You can see the, uh, the time check board right now with Buff Megamo and Buff Megamo 2 putting the partnership of Baking Adias in a very good position to go for the stage although if they want to win the stage they have over two minutes two minutes 40 to make up and barring incident Willia Pirelli factory should be able to hold that at least for the next few kilometers putting their rivals under pressure and we're back with Carl Platt and Dario are you in touch with Carl Platt hearing um, just what the uh, what the pace is like and um, and how these two are progressing um, at the moment, it looks like they're progressing really good and, re and really hard. So they're on the downhill from uh, the Wolfgang. Uh, uh, it looks like a comfortable lead for uh, the Team Villa Pirelli Factory Racing. It's already 2 minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, but uh, Carl, they don't know about that. No, they don't know about uh, the comfortable gap. Maybe when they're listening now to when I'm... Uh, talking they they will know uh, but yeah yeah like i said before it's always good to be in the downhill such a technical downhill in front and not to get uh, not to get stuck behind some other riders yeah and they're pushing all the time it's really decent speed so it's all the time on fire so i don't i think they don't even care about that so uh, they just go just setting their own pace at the moment and uh, that's what they made throughout the whole week yeah exactly <clears throat> they're just going their own speed but uh, Fabian is and Daniel also they sometimes look back just to see where the other riders are but yeah they can't see anyone so the the gap is quite comfortable now the gap is quite comfortable. As we have seen, uh, Team Lux, as Neil said, is on place six at the moment. And uh, they, are, it, they didn't have a perfect preparation for this stage as well. So uh, Franz Klaas had uh, a, a peace thing yesterday oh. during, uh, during the race. And uh, he had to go to the hospital yesterday afternoon with the ambulance. See so, oh, he had an allergic reaction, has to go to the hospital, stay there for about two hours and then uh, yeah, he came back to the hotel. And he was not sure if uh, he was able to start uh, at this uh, last stage of the, of the Swiss Epic this year. Uh, it was a bit of a mess, but he has his uh, nurse with him 
So with uh, his team partner is uh, Andrin Bele, and he takes uh, uh, care of him. So there have been a lot of peace around yesterday. You came out without a stick. Or Carla, did you get hit by this, uh, by this piece as well? Oh, uh, I didn't hear about the bees. And uh, yeah, I never saw some, some bees. So I've, we've been lucky. You've been lucky. So uh, a few other riser, riders get stung by a bee. And now, uh, yeah, they're really doing well. The team laps with only three minutes behind the leaders, fifth place, as we said before, the other local team, the first local team with Fadri Barandun and uh, his uh, German companion with Vincent Dong on the fifth place at the moment. Yes, we saw the, uh, the profile earlier just superimposed on the screen and we could see the progress of the riders. That is a tracking... Uh, a, a tracking diagram of exactly where all of the riders are on the course and we can see in the lead the uh, with the Bulls Media e-bike we're on about the 25 26 kilometer mark with the men and right now we're behind the top women's contenders the top three women's teams and we're riding with uh, Stefan Som behind uh, right now it's uh, Deborah Piana who we saw yesterday riding in the stage the very rainy stage and uh, Almost uh, getting that stage victory, just being pipped on the post by Dalak Morath, and looking very much in touch with uh, with the lead right now, and going to be going for an yet another stage win, uh, very much in their sights. They've yeah, we have a, a pairing we of have Marath a and Giannis. They have won four the out of four, and uh, we'll have to see how ambitious they are with winning today's stage. If we're all together at the finish line, so Neil, uh, just we roll into Neil, the finish line. If all, four, all three teams are together. It should be an exciting sprint finish Neil, can like you we had me? yesterday. And we're going to be crossing back to Stefan. Yeah, we have uh, quite a situation. As you just said, Deborah is uh, riding in front of me, but it looks like she has lost her gear shifter. She has lost her gear shifter, and she's on the biggest gear right now trying to manage uh, trying to manage the, the the situation very well so that's it's a real well, strange it's, situation it's, she, she probably rides with the electric shifter that's probably why you exactly. can look a shifter yeah exactly she's riding with the electronic shifting and she's lost the shifter and now riding in the biggest gear. It's still okay here in the in the downhill sections, but it will it will be interesting how they manage to to uh, deal with the situation later on. If they have something to, if they have a shifter in the tech zone to change and if not, then the climbing will be horrible later. So that's, that's a, a, a thing that they are able to change or to get a fresh shifter in the box in the next tech zone. If they so have a yeah. to carry. Yeah, they're allowed yeah, to carry a it. lot of stuff with them. Yeah, if they have it. If I'm just thinking about how to, how to make that. So probably she has to stop to change gear and then to ride on. But that's, uh, what wow, that's a real disadvantage. It's really, really yeah, bad uh, now. That's bad, really bad luck. And that's gonna be a mission. So let's hope they have something in there in their tech boxes and they can try to minimize the damage. So, so we will, so real we will see later on. Yeah, otherwise said, uh, in the, the all okay. teams are in otherwise all the teams are together. Well actually Kim Lecourt and uh, Vera Losa are out in the front on the downhill. I can't see them anymore. They are trying to to make a gap on this uh, really slippery downhill. So many routes that are wet and just incredibly slippery. Dario, you can see from the cadence of the rider in front, the really low cadence means that uh, uh, Stefan Sam's words are confirmed. 
that uh, the rider is stuck in the biggest, the highest gear possible. And this not only is going to cause uh, issues with losing time, having to repair, but also imagine the damage that she's doing to her legs, having to ride in such a big gear. Uh, the uh, all important uh, maintaining the cadence of around about 80 or 90 revolutions per minute is all about saving the legs, keeping the legs in good condition. That seems to be more or less the optimum cadence for a mountain biker, with some obvious exceptions in the steep sections. But uh, if a rider has to com complete any kind of uh, complete the rest of the course, or in fact has to even just get down to the tech zone in a gear that uh, that she's in right now, it's going to really cause a bit of damage and uh, again threaten their hopes of winning the stage today. As we follow the uh, follow the leading teams, the top women's teams down, we can get a chance to just have a look what it, what kind of equipment it takes to follow the race and bring us these fantastic images. Hi, my name is Stefan Flam. I was a professional racer for Team Wolves for nine years, and since six years, Super. Vielen Dank. So we're right now with Carl Platt at the uh, water point and he's just uh, uh, changing his battery where the uh, riders would refuel. Carl Platt needs to put a new battery back into his Bulls Media e-bike and he'll be no doubt getting back to the very front end of the field, back to the yellow jersey holders, Fabian Rabensteiner and a marauding uh, Daniel Gessmeyer on the front of the day, on the front of the stage most of today. Now after a very early move from Buff Megamo, uh, it seemed Daniel Gessmeyer took over back with the women's category and Stefan Sam just showing from the images we're seeing, showing how technical these trails are, the routes are very slippery and the riders just taking a bit of a conservative approach on these routes, just uh, taking a bit of a walk over them, knowing how slippery they are. We saw the back wheel there slipping out. Of course, the rider in front of us has got technical issues. She is stuck in her biggest gear, in her longest gear, having to pedal super low revolutions per minute uh, just to stay in touch and no doubt... Uh, her luck will run out at some point. Hopefully she can get down to that tech zone. And uh, let's uh, let's see if they do have a shift. If there is a shifter in that box, each rider gets allocated a tech, a tech box where they can opt to put um, a pile of parts, whatever they choose, so that uh, if there are any issues out on the trail, once the team gets to that tech zone, they can dip into that box and pull out whatever they might need for the rest of the stage. Hopefully there will be something there for the rider in front. The uh, Swiss Epic every year in the nine editions, there is a new route every year, completely redesigned and rethought. And we're going to go down to Stefan to see, to just to hear what it takes to design the route of the Spa Swiss Epic. So this is uh, Stefan Wolfsberg, the course designer of the uh, Swiss Epic, probably since uh, nine years, so since the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's true, since the beginning. Great job, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of the greatest jobs in the world. Yeah. Well, it's my hobby and it's my job, so what else do you want? 
Yeah, this year is uh, like a, a special thing. It's the ninth time. There was a long stage yesterday between Larks and uh, the Force. How could you find trails like that? I know the region pretty well, but you find some real good stuff. Well, I'm in the Alps during the whole year when I've got time. And my family has to follow me, so <laughs> we camp somewhere and I go with my e-bike. Uh, obviously, I, when I started, I didn't have an e-bike and it was, it was really hard. Now I've got e-bikes and then it goes really fast. So you try one, if it doesn't work, go back, try next one. Yeah. So everybody's happy with the stage. So riders are coming back. They probably know you that you're the course designer and uh, yeah, they're happy with, the, uh, with your trails. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. To, yesterday some said about the weather, but I'm sorry about the weather, so <laughs> no, I'm, it's, it's great to do this job because most of the people are happy. They sometimes uh, complain about the steep uphills, but you know, in Switzerland it's really difficult to have, not have steep uphills. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're already prepared for next year, the 10th Swiss Epic. Did you already choose the, the stages? Yeah, the main of the course is already done and uh, now we have to do it to the authorities and then we get feedbacks and then we have to change probably everything again, but uh, I have a plan so for the so three stages. It's easy to find trails in Switzerland, but it's not easy to get the permission for these trails. Yes, sometimes, yes. Uh, it, it depends on which region. Uh, I mean, around Davos uh, you have many trails which are built, so it's not that difficult we stay on this one but in the uh, stages like yesterday you have many comments in between and they need to give you a, on everyone you need a permission and some say no problem and others are difficult and you have private owl landowners so yeah it's always the same <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> Stefan Waldisberg Making history at the Swiss Epic. Your Spa Swiss Epic Graubünden 2022, the longest stage ever. 100 kilometers, 2,800 meters. However, 2,800 sounds like a little over 100 kilometers. However, Mother Nature is going to add some spice. The race been uh, very exciting uh, till now. I mean, uh, the leaders team they did very uh, very well. They stayed calm and they played always a good uh, some good cards and. Uh, for today, I expect uh, a lot of pain for the riders, uh, even for myself. Uh, we expect lots of rain, but uh, and it's the longest stage of this Swiss Epic. So I hope everyone survives nicely and uh, can reach the finish line.
this was possibly one of the toughest days on in uh, that I've ever had on a bike. It was wet. Did I say wet? No, wait. I think it was a little wet. Uh, it was slippery. It was wet, and there were some hills. So it was a tough day out, but my partner rocked it like a champion. Uh, no gloves. He left the gloves in the hotel room, and um, but another uh, another great day on the bike. It's a tough day on the bike. Thank you to the Swiss Epic guys. Yeah. Well done. And we're back live at uh, stage five, the final stage of the Spa Swiss Epic and the ninth edition of the Spectacular Race in the Alps in the Graubünden region. And we're with the women's category at the moment and the mechanical woes of the team right in front of us, and that is the MTB Pro merchandising team, Cingalani team of Wurst and Piana. Mechanical issues with the gears, uh, unable to shift out of the largest gear, and as they watch their hopes of a stage win disappear up the road, we can see the riders up the road disappearing. They'll be looking to get to that tech zone as soon as they possibly can to try and resolve that broken shifter. We are currently with Stefan Sam, who may be able to... Uh, Daria, I'm not sure if Stefan Sam can give us more insights as to what's happening with that gear shifter. Uh, Stefan, uh, that's a big disadvantage to ride just in the, in the highest gear. Absolutely, it destroys your rhythm completely. Um, yeah, she had to dismount multiple times just to make it through technical section. So on and off the bike really destroys the rhythm. But then the cool thing is they don't give up. They keep just fighting. They want to make it to the tech zone. And probably they already have a game plan how to yeah. fix this. Yeah, I, just I, it's cool to watch. With, uh, I just had a chat with one of the mechanics for me, uh, Ivan Faust. A local mechanic up here in Tafos, and he told me that there are two small uh, uh, buttons on, on the uh, rear, uh, the, the rear derailleur, and uh, she can shift there. So it's possible to be possible to manual shift that, but every time she has to go off the bike, shift, and uh, yeah. sh and and back on the bike again. And the other thing is, she can uh, replace. The, the, the shifter in the tech zone, if they have a shifter. That's the thing. So this she's running. Big, this is the big question. Yeah, she's this running a wireless electronic shifting system, and uh, that's the big issue at the moment. If they have something uh, at the service station, otherwise it's getting pretty hard. Another thing is she can shift on, on, on her smartphone, but probably you know, you're not uh, having her smartphone with you during uh, a stage race like this. Yeah, <laughs> I think shift, shifting manually is only an option if it goes really long uphill. But at the moment, you can see, I mean, she has to dismount it on a 10% incline, dropping left into a single track again. But they're managing quite well, so. So, Dario, just looking at it now, you'd be able to tell us, but it looks like it is Janina Wurst who has, who has the issues with her shifter as the uh, team MTB Pro Merchandising yes. are struggling. It's Janina Wurst, that is the Swiss rider who is having issues with that shifter, unable to shift out of the biggest gear, and Deborah Piana will have to nurse her through the stage. And we saw a few moments ago they were at that point with the overall leaders, the Vos Klosters women, and um, Daria, you'll be able to be in touch with Stefan just to get an idea of where we where we have efficient infinity insure rare street coffee. Where is Vera Lawser and Kim Lacourt? Yes, uh, we're back with uh, Stefan, and these are the leaders. So Vera Lawser and Kim Lacourt are still in the lead, Stefan. They are still in the lead. Yes, I can't see them. They pulled a kind of a big gap on the on the downhill. Oh, there was some confusion about where the track went, but everything okay, everybody right on track now, yeah. Um, it's, it's very up and down, left and right, so you can't see really far. Um, 
I need to check later on how far the gap, how big the gap is. When I have the possibility to jump ahead, I will try to do that and give you more information. Yeah. It, it, it was about 26 seconds at Kochna board and 70 kilometers yeah. to go, but they're already at kilometer 22 at the moment. The, okay. Uh, the Vera Loser and Kim Lefort, so the gap is getting, getting bigger and they uh, made a real good uh, downhill from Gotschner Boden down. Or do you know anything? Did the force close this uh, had a crash or, or mechanical as well? Or what happened to them to lose so much time in a short? No. Um, so now Diana is shouting. Okay, it looks like she had a crash at a turn-off, Bettina Janas, also the number is flapping on her jersey. Um, but she looks okay, she was just talking to Adelheid, asking her if she's bleeding in the face, but uh, it doesn't look like. So I, this is quite a hectic and stressy situation at the moment. And the men are, and the men are a little bit uh, in their way. Okay, so I will try situation to, with, it's with a stressy uh, situation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there must be a crash for Tim Tafos, Klosters, for Bettina Janas and Adelheid Morat. As Stefan Sam told us, Adelheid, uh, no, uh, Bettina was bleeding in the face, so uh, something happened on the way down. And the gap is already 1 minute and 44 at the Wolfgang Pass. So at kilometer 22, the gap is 1 minute 44. And this is for the mountain bike pro merchandising team. So Janina Wurst with only one gear on second place together with Deborah Pian and then on third place with a gap of one a minute and uh, 49 seconds, it's Bettina Janus and Adelheid Morat. So what a drama in this last stage in the lead with the secure lead at the moment. It's Vera Lose with Kim Lecourt without any problems. And both of the other teams, they've been in real trouble in, within the last uh, few minutes. So I will so try, try to chase back to the, to the leading women. See if I can manage that in a short amount of time. So we try to catch back as well with uh, with with the men. So the men are already. This is the 22 kilometer time, as we told you before. Efficient Infinity Incher right in front of Mountain Bike Pro merchandising team. One minute. 44 in the back and then the Tafos closed this women team with one minute and 49. So pure drama in the women's race on this fifth stage. And we're going back to Karl. That's uh, Willi Pirelli factory racing team. Fabian Rabensteiner and Daniel Geismayer. They're still in the lead and they're already on the way back through the Fjellatal. Uh, Heading back to, towards uh, the force. Exactly, Dario. So in the men's race, there's no drama. There's everything controlled. The track for rally team is controlling the race very well. So they're riding smooth. So we did already the Fluela pass. And now we are on the, uh, on the downhill. It's a beautiful downhill. It's more raw. Lots of rocks. Good fun to ride. So this is... Again, mountain bike heaven. This is mountain bike heaven. You make me tell us once again, so every day a few times, Carl. Uh, this trail is so good. It's so good. I prefer this kind of trails. More natural, some rocks. And uh, yeah, it's not, it's uh, more, oh, some cow pizza, Alpine pizza. <laughs> uh, once again, the Alpine pizza. I can't talk too much, otherwise I end up eating it. Uh, you ate some cow pizza. You ate some Alpen pizza. <laughs> no, I too close my mouth. Ah, too wow. close. Good. <laughs> so some cow barriers uh, just uh, around here. So cows are heading up to the to the mountains during uh, the summer month. 
here in Switzerland. Normally they're down uh, in the, around the falls and during uh, summertime they move up towards uh, the higher parts of this uh, area and this trail, the Flüele Trail. Ah, so nice. It's so nice. Yeah. So you still yeah, can ask us some questions yeah. throughout no. our uh, YouTube channel if you want to know what cow pizza is or something like this. <laughs> Alpen pizza, we call it. Yeah, Alpen pizza. So, Alpen pizza, sorry. sorry. So the race at the men's uh, competition is not as hectical as it, as it is at, at the women's competition. So the cap is pretty good, and they're enjoying the downhill now as well, so... Okay. Once again, a cow barrier for the riders in the front. So during winter time, on the right hand side, we have a, a real famous uh, cross skiing slope, cross country skiing slope. During the whole area in the force up here is filled up with a cross country skiing slope. A lot of skiing slope, a lot of uh, back country riding through the winter time. And uh, they even have a real famous hockey team up here. It's the HCD record holder in championship in uh, Switzerland and uh, our race village is right in front of the yeah most beautiful hockey stadium uh, in Europe some people say it's the most beautiful hockey stadium in the world part of the uh, world famous Bengal Cup a real nice hockey tournament throughout the uh, Christmas New Year up here so hockey season will start uh, in the next uh, three weeks here in Switzerland. But uh, yeah, that's something about the force. The force is very multi-sportable. But in this week, we're just focusing on mountain bike racing at the Spa Swiss Epic. Yeah, uh, wow. Carl, the pictures are so beautiful. I believe. In real, it's even better. <laughs> this trail so is so amazing. It's so flowy. We have the rally factory racing. The gap is uh, 2 minutes and 24 to buff Mega Mo 2. So the two buff teams with Hans Becking, Jose Diaz and Hugo Dreschu and Enrique Mozilla Vergara that you get in the chase for place number one and then right behind these guys it's the singer racing team on uh, fourth place with two minutes and 35 team St. Moritz dropped back a little bit they're now with three minutes and nine seconds on fifth place so probably be their effort on the first climb up to Gotchna was a, was a bit too hard. Yes, and Dario, it's interesting to see that uh, on that chase group how much things have changed in the in the race. Nothing has changed with the leaders, the riders out front, William Pirelli for act, uh, Factory, but uh, Buff Megamo team uh, did put in an early effort. They suffered from it. The Singer Racing team really was suffering in the very early parts of the race, dropping back almost to the third or fourth chase group. Um, St. Moritz really right up there with uh, Team Alchemist and Attitude. And Team Alchemist and Attitude, spare a thought for Shershi and Tronconi. They had a mechanical. Now they're lying over eight minutes back. They were four, They were really in solidifying their position in third spot overall. But right now, that third spot on the overall general classification podium is severely under threat so buff megamo right now have a lot to do they will be focused very much on taking that third spot from team ktm alchemist so another race developing here out on the trails and around about the halfway mark through the 58 kilometer uh, final stage around the of the swiss epic and they look like they're going to be 
um, really they've got their work cut out for them, KTM Alchemist. They've got a lot of catching up to do because uh, with Buff Megamo already uh, around about four minutes ahead, they've, uh, they've got to defend that uh, third spot on overall. If they want to be standing still on that podium in that third spot in Davos. Just looking at Gessmeyer. Gessmeyer has hardly left the front of the race. Leaving where Evenstein are very happy just to follow the wheel and uh, just a testimony to how strong the Austrian is. They call him the mountain goat. He's tall for a mountain goat. He's 1.89 meters and 73 kilometers. Not one of the pure, pure climbers, but that's not holding him back from absolutely tearing this race apart with an over two, two minutes 24 lead over Buff Megamo, the finest riders in the sport. And Daniel Gessmeyer is putting them all to the sword. The pairing has definitely clicked. All important team dynamic between Rabensteiner and Gessmeyer is playing out and is really working. We'll be looking forward to more racing in the coming years, in the coming, um, the coming events in the Epic Series just to see if this pairing continues because, of course, they are part of the Italian outfit. There are four riders or more, in fact, in the Italian outfit, and they do chop and change. They switch the riders around, looking for that perfect combination, keeping the fans and, of course, their rivals guessing as to who will be pairing with whom. But with this pairing right now that seems to have gelled absolutely perfectly, it's clear that uh, we can expect more from, uh, from these two in the coming years in mountain biking. They're only 32 years old. Both of them are 32. They've still got a good few years left in them at their physical peak. And of course, with the experience they've been gaining, you just saw a bit of a bit of skills there from Rabensteiner just lifting the back wheel and getting through these tricky sections. All of these trails completely unique. I've seen the, uh, talked about it earlier when we were describing what the route is all about. And Dario, you'll know these trails intimately. It is in your backyard after all. So just talk, you just talk a little bit about what these trails are like and how different they are from each other, even though it's all part of the same network. There seems to be uniqueness in each and every one of them. Yeah, we have a lot of different uh, trails up here in the falls as well. Uh, and even today, they're uh, checking out all the differences between them. So they've been on, uh, on gravel roads, they've been on a single trail like this. And later on, we're coming into the Kugelibahn, a man-made flow trail. So, uh, as we said before, the force is some kind of a trail paradise. So, we're uh, yeah, having a lot of trails around here. All around the force is just open with them. You can go up with the gondola. You can go up with the shuttle. You can pedal up if you want. So there are a lot of real nice trails here. But uh, today it's a, 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 bit, a bit special. So it was dry throughout the whole summer. So it didn't rain for the last uh, two months that much. So only only a little. And it, everything was so dry. And uh, now it rained really hard yesterday. And the uh, trails are uh, pretty slippery. So especially the rocky parts and the, the rooty parts. So the roots are so slippery at the moment. You know that, and uh, you really have to take care on uh, trails like this that you're not getting a flat tire or you're not getting a crash. So we had, uh, even today, if it looks uh, really good with the weather, uh, as we have seen from the downhill from Gotchna down to the force, trail's been so slippery, riders always had to stop and uh, had to get off, uh, off their bikes. So now we're in one of these uh, real slippery trails with Thomas Ditch and the chases at the uh, men's competition. So, Thomas, we can't see much because uh, your lens is a bit uh, dirty, but uh, who's chasing really hard at the moment? Uh, it's Hans Becking pushing really hard at the moment. Uh, oh, no, it's Jose Jazz. Now it's uh, Jose Jazz in, in front. Just behind it, uh, Simon Stibian and Martin Pry. And the second uh, Megamo team is on the... On the Sales position of this uh, this group with uh, uh, with Hugo, Hugo the, the Rechou. Yes, so it's uh, three teams, Buff, Megano, one and two, and single racing team. So as uh, the single racing team came back at the beginning of the day, we thought they're uh, off because of their effort from yesterday. Exactly, they came back, they found some legs, and now they. They were looking strong in the, 
is the last uphill. Let's see what they can do in the, in the next one. But they were looking strong. Perhaps Martin and uh, Sim, Sim, Simon get back the, the legs. Yeah. Did they have some kind of a leg opener in on the first uphill? So at the beginning, they've been uh, really slow. Can that often happen sometimes uh, in the first uphill after a hard yeah, day like yeah. yesterday? After the, the day of yesterday, after the the cold rain, it's really difficult to to find the day after the, the legs, and that was the case for for Martin and for Simon. But now they are looking. I'm most strong. They can follow uh, Jose Diaz and Hans Baking. Yeah, and they, they make uh, a good job and they are fast. I mean, they are pushing really hard now. Is it a big advantage that Buff Megano is uh, in this uh, chasing group with uh, two teams? Yeah, sure, because in this type of downhill, it's, uh, it's a really big advantage. It's, uh, it's not really. Uh, uh, technical, but it you have to really take care to every every small stone because some stone are really sharp. So some stone you can go full gas on. Um, yeah, you have to be really concentrated on on your bike. But it's definitely really good to have two teams. So right, so now in a in a short uphill, uh, reaching the top uh, right now. Then that goes down again on a. On a gravel road, and then uh, this short uphill is coming later on, right after this trail. At the moment, they're around kilometer uh, 41 with the leaders, and the chases are exactly at kilometer 40. Yeah, you can. Uh... That, uh, so sorry to interrupt you. Just looking at that, uh, at those time checks, even at the 30 kilometer mark. We saw that uh, Team KTM Alchemist are uh, eight minutes thirty-five back, and we Landing. do look. We have to look at the general classification before the start of today's stage. That the Buff Megamo had a six-minute and eight-second deficit to that team. So that means right now, looking at the time check, that Buff Megamo are riding themselves into that third spot on overall general classification. So that's maybe why we see the urgency of Hans Becking on the front. He's not necessarily hoping to close that gap to the Willia Peretti factory team. He is looking to get his team into that third spot on the overall podium. Yeah, it's not all about the stage today, about the stage win. It's, uh, as you told, Neil, it's about the general classification. But the thing is, probably they don't know what happens uh, in the back. So they're just riding their own race. Uh, I'm not sure if they get information from outside about the general classification. So, yeah, it, it's a strange situation. What do you think, Thomas? Do they ah, know I, something sure. about that? I'm not sure that they know that uh, the Catan Tina has a technical issue, but they know that they're not there and not with us. And it's uh, probably for this reason that they, they push hard and they try to, yeah, to, to go away. And they proud to come back to the yellow jersey, why not? But because they are really pushing hard now. So th there's nobody around to give some information from outside to the speed riders. I saw just uh, before in the, in the long climb, uh, the, the team manager, perhaps he gave some info. I, I'm not sure. It was a team manager on the on the way to the to the last uh, last climb yes for sure i just want to come to back to you stefan sam is there with the ladies with some informations yeah we are now at the tech zone the feed tech zone so let's see what janina is doing Yes, she's going straight uh, into this tech zone. She's going straight into the tech zone. This is our uh, supporting zone. It's uh, Maskebici. And uh, she now has to check one of her boxes. So every exactly. team carries their own, uh, their own box. Probably she has a shifter in the box. Let's see what they have. Du darfst nichts machen. So this is uh, 
The so team manager of a, uh, the Mike Pro merchandising team is not allowed to help. No, it's not allowed. I'm switching to the head cam. So they are searching their tech box. They find a lot of stuff, but they're not yet the shifter. I think they're not even sure if they have a shifter. No, exactly. On, on, they haven't seen. So, okay. It looks like... It looks but, uh, like they don't they have a shifter. So, but well, it's a, is it a different gear now? So, did it, they take in a, a different gear, so... Um, yeah, I'm actually not quite sure what's happening now because she's... She looks like she's getting a new shifter from uh, Moscovici. Not uh, really sure if this is according to the to the regulation. Um, yeah, I but think if, maybe it's, if maybe it's, it's the just, official uh, partner, it should be okay. But I will check that. Yeah, so yes. uh, yeah you uh, can you uh, can check that. But it looks like they have a looks like they have something to uh, to to. But, but, but even that, so you've been with the Mountain Bike Pro merchandising, did, did the team, the Force Closters, already came came back? So, do you know anything about uh, no, Bettina I Janos? Been, I, have, I have been, uh, you go, go, go. I have been at the, at the front of the race with uh, Vera and Kim Lacourt, and uh, there's still yeah, a mini move of a, of a yeah, one and a half minute gap, I think. So it's qu quite, quite big still. I, I try to make my way um to the front so it looks like it looks like uh team merchandise mountain bike merchandise gets uh, their bike fixed here and uh let's see how they they end up now they have to pair the shifters they have to pair and the then shifters. They that's the thing as as we told you before it's a wireless uh, system so, so janina what what happened Oh, so, so she hit a fence. Oh, no. So really bad luck. So really I was bad luck. driving down and then down, I realized I okay, really bad luck in, in one of the fences at the tight spot. She so hit the handlebar hard and, uh, yeah, she continued to ride, but then on the, on the downhill she realized that she lost the shifter. Okay, I'll make my way up. So, Stefan Sam, thank you for these insights from the tech zone. We're going back to Thomas now with the leaders. And uh, that's the good thing if you're in a big bunch on a tarmac road like that. It's a big advantage. So, Thomas, we're uh, in the... In the uh, Going to the last uphill of today's stage on a tarmac road with uh, the first uh, chasers. As I told before, it's a big advantage to ride in such a group. In such a group. Yeah, it's a big advantage. Now we arrive on the third heat on, and we will. Uh, some some rider will probably take some some bottles, and I will take a battery. <laughs> So they just grab a fresh bottle that will take uh, no time at all. And we are going back to Stefan Sam. My name is Stefan Sam. I was a professional racer for Team Bulls for nine years. And since six years, I'm doing the e-bike riding, bring the live stream uh, in the Cape Epic and Swiss Epic. And uh, yeah, bringing all the all the action to the to the viewers. And can you tell us just a little bit about the bike that you're riding? We are riding a Bulls e-bike. It's uh, for this year Swiss Epic. It's a Bulls E-Stream Evo AM4, and it's basically a all-mountain uh, platform with 150 millimeters suspension front and rear. We have a Prose motor, which is pretty powerful and. Uh, and quiet that helps to not distract the riders while we are close to them. We have a 750 watt hour battery, which gives us enough power to yeah, almost go all the stage. But for safety reasons, we, 
we swap at uh, swap hot swap batteries uh, at every every uh, feed zone, and that's yeah, it's basically a, a thing of a couple of seconds to to swap it, and then we are back on the track again and ready to to catch the action. Can you just talk to um, just to explain how the communication works? So you can you, you, what's special the innovation that we have with the helmet. And the, and the so we are we are carrying a lot of gear in a in a kind of a heavy backpack, but it's all neatly organized, and there is like tran uh, transmission uh, equipment inside to to do the live stream. But one of the most important things is communication with uh, with the start line, with the commentators and everyone. And so we have uh, made a, a custom setup with with the helmet. Where we uh, it, we look a little bit like uh, fighter pilots uh, with uh, we have a headset that works uh, really good also in uh, in in high speed that reduces noise and uh, makes makes commentary uh, possible so we can always hear editors talking we can hear the commentators talking at the start finish line I can talk to Tom I can talk to Carl who are the other e bike riders and that makes our life really easy. We're uh, back live with the uh, front of the race and we're on the Bulls Media e-bike with Carl Platt following the marauding uh, Willier Pirelli team and for the first time in quite a while we see Fabian Rabensteiner take the lead. We've seen Daniel Gesmeyer leading almost all of the uh, so 40 odd kilometers so far in the stage and, Ge and Gesmeyer just leaving it up to Fabian Rabensteiner to just set the pace so that uh, Gizmar can take just a small bit of respite in the draft of his Italian teammate and unexpected attack at that uh, first early climb, the really steep uh, first obstacle of the day in fact, William Pirelli Factory just responded to an attack from Hans Becking and Buff Megamo and just made it stick and gaining over two minutes on the chasing team currently at the 42 kilometer mark they are 2 minutes and 11 seconds ahead of Singer Racing Team Buff Megamo and Buff Megamo 2, in fact. The two Buff Megamo teams chasing together. And they will cooperate because looking down that list at the previous time check, 8 minutes and 35 seconds back, our KTM Alchemist and Attitude. All eyes on the two Italian, Cerci and Tronconi, as to whether or not they're able to close that gap to Buff Megamo and Buff Megamo may have information out on the course that they are very much in contention for that third spot on overall GC but even if they don't even if they don't have information on the exact time gaps Buff Megamo will notice very the, the significant absence of KTM Alchemist in that front chasing group chasing after Pirelli Factory Racing so they know they need to make it count so if we see urgency on the faces of Hans Becking and Jose Diaz to close the gap to Pirelli Factory. It's all about distancing KTM Alchemist and of course maybe even a stage win to boot if they can make that move stick. We're still with Carl Platt. Dario are you in touch with Carl Platt just to uh, see really what the urgency is on the trail. It's always interesting to see just who's setting the pace and uh, and what kind of a what kind of just how how fast they're going really that's that's what we want to know what uh, what's the what's their chances of that um, of, of that stage win looking like yeah the stage win looks pretty good i think uh, but carl platt you know you get the insights this team is looking incredibly strong again today yeah they they did today the right move to go in the beginning and then to keep out of uh, all the stress with the other riders and they so strong so they can yeah, go together and share the work. So in the last kilometers, they were sharing the work. Also on the Fluela Pass, they, they've been going incredibly fast. So I'd, uh, I was watching again, Daniel Geismeyer's speedometer, and they pushed about 
380, 400 watts. So that's their normal speed. That's their comfort zone. And now it looks like they're getting their stage win. Yeah, they're going for the stage win and they're for sure going for the channel of classification win. It looks really good at the moment. Some kind of looks like, like a victory lap now around the force. But this is the last real hard uphill, last uphill of the day. It's the last uphill of the Spartans APIC at the 2022 edition. They're at kilometer 47 now. Uh, do you know the last downhill, Carl? Uh, I don't know it exactly, but uh, when I see it, probably I know it. Because there are yeah, so many and... Uh, okay, yeah, then I know. It. There are some, some awesome jumps. And uh, is it this downhill? Yeah, and they're coming down the Hügeliban and then uh, back down to the force as they came into this uh, beautiful race village here, like they did uh, yesterday. Oh, now I can see the race village. Look, yeah. I can see you. Okay. You're downstairs, there. <laughs> Hello, Carl. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, see you soon. Uh, and these I'm two looking guys, they look, to the downhill. Yeah, they're looking incredibly strong today. Really comfortable. So, Dario, looking at that graphic on the screen, we are at the 46 kilometer mark um, out of the full 58 kilometers. And all eyes as to what that timing check says at almost the 50 kilometer mark, that's at the peak of the climb, just before that final bit of steep downhill single track. You can see on the, uh, if you go, if you log on to the website, you'll be able to see an exact profile of the stage. And that will denote what the trail surface looks like on the final. And it is red, which red is single track from that peak that we see just in front of the lead to pro men line there. We expect to see them there in just a few minutes. And uh, then we'll be looking back to what the time shapes look like. And uh, all eyes, of course, on William Pirelli. They are riding consistently. They've had the luxury and Carl Platt said it himself, that he did, they did exactly the right thing to escape early so they could ride the single track on their own without any interference from any of the other riders. Being on their own means that they were unencumbered by other riders. Maybe just a, an odd hesitation here and there. They could ride their own rhythm and keep their own flow. And of course, just with the huge firepower they have with Daniel Gesma, who is leading at the moment again, just pulling this train along. They have played this stage absolutely perfectly. And that victory lap around Davos is going to be a sweet one that they'll remember forever. Daniel Gesmeyer has won the Swiss Epic before. He won in 2017. And looking to add another Spa Swiss Epic title to his name. And Ravensteiner as well. A victory in 2019 riding with Casa Grande. And Gesmeyer having switched teams after riding with Jochen Kess. Is now with the Italian outfit and they've changed bike sponsors from an American sponsor. Now they have the Italian bike sponsor, Willier, and clearly things are going well for the all Italian team. And the pairing of uh, Gesmeyer and Rabensteiner is certainly clicking. And we're back with Team Singer. Team Singer had a successful day yesterday. Martin Fry matching perfectly the tactical move by uh, Simon Stepjohn. Just in the final closing kilometers in that sprint finish, that thrilling sprint finish of the longest stage we've seen in the history of the race, 100 kilometers, we're able to put in a bit of extra effort to uh, get line honors and to stand on the top step of the podium. But uh, really a close look at what Jose Diaz is doing right now. He's on the front driving super hard and there are now only two teams in that chase group of Singer and Buff Megamo. Jose Diaz is putting maximum pressure down he senses that there is weakness and he knows full well that Team KTM are not in that group. We're going to be hearing from Dario in a moment. He's in touch with the e-bike riders. And I changed something in the chasing group because I only saw four riders. So there's only one Buff Megano team uh, in this uh, chasing group. We think a racing team, it's only Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Where is the team Buff Megamo 2 with Hugo Dreschu, Enrique Mosile Vegara, Thomas? Did they uh, drop off? 
Yeah, poor, poor French guys. <laughs> yeah, Hugo, the drop off. The second uh, Buff make a team drop off now, and it's uh, only two two team with uh, with the team with uh, with me. It's um, yeah the the Buff make a team in front. Uh, Jose is uh, leading and pushing hard, and uh, yeah Simon and uh, Martin uh, follow follow this, uh, these two guys. Nice comeback from uh, Simon and Martin. Nice comeback. They were really fighting in the first climb. But now Martin Pye and Simon Stibian can, can follow the, um, the Buff Mega team with uh, Hans Baking and Joseph Yes, It's nice to see them. It's nice. What do you think? The gap is only two minutes to the front. Can they close that gap in this uh, last uh, 10 k's of racing? It depends, huh? because when I, I see Jose Diaz, he's pushing like, uh, like really crazy. He wants really to push hard and to... Yeah, to go. He, he give all his energy now. It's the last uh, appeal from this Swiss Epic. He has to give oh, everything. We were just in that uh, really, really tricky, rocky technical downhill after the tar uphill, and Kim Lacourt had a flat tire, so they had to put a plug in as well, and uh, <laughs> putting some more air with the CO2 cartridge. Well, it so, looks like it was a quick fix, pretty much 20 seconds lost. They should still have a comfortable lead. But of course, uh, this adds some drama as well. Yes, adding some drama once more at the women's race. So the efficient Infinity Incher Raspberry Coffee team was in the lead with over three minutes. Now, they have a flat tie or had a flat tie. They tried to fix it. But uh, definitely after a flat tire, you're always not sure if uh, the air stays stays in uh, in the tube. Wow. Probably you start to ride a bit different after a flat tire. Am I right, Stefan? Yes, of course. Yeah. You don't know because you pump some air, but you don't know your exact, exact tire pressure. So it's either too less it's a, or it's too hard. So you start riding very, very like almost on raw eggs and uh, trying not to puncture again. You also don't know if, uh, if you fixed the tire correctly, but it looks like for now the, the air is uh, staying in the tire and they can continue. They had a comfortable lead and they managed the situation very well, like so real, real know, professionals. Did they use your uh, own the Samurai uh, tool that you created? Unfortunately not, but they could have saved a couple of seconds if they used my tool, but still, <laughs> they did very well. <laughs> exactly, thank you very much. Them. You need to talk to them. I need to talk to them. <laughs> so, the samurai the, tool. Uh, leaders, and we're looking at the left hand screen now, the leaders in the men's category, and the chasers on the right screen now, the split screen, giving us an idea of just the urgency of the pace right now at the very front of the race the leaders at the moment team william william pirelli are on a fantastic day which is right about a two minute gap on the chasing group of team buff megamo and singer and daniel gesmeyer on the front most of the morning um opening up a gap really early on in the day on that first steep climb we are uh, with carl platt's e-bike mountain the um, bulls media e-bike right now and uh, no doubt Stefan will be talking to him throughout the stage, Stefan Sam, and uh, I believe that Dario is in touch with Carl right now. So only 10 kilometers to go, and once again, the unbelievable Daniel Geismeyer uh, in the lead. So he was really strong throughout the whole week, Carl. Yeah, Dario. Dario Geismeyer is pushing again from the front. I just had a, sh a quick talk to him, asking him how much he's pushing. And then when I saw it, it was 450, 420. So they're really on fire. But I understand this completely. Now they get some extra motivation, some extra power because they're winning this race. This Spa Swiss Epic. <clears throat> and then they're getting their stage win. Yeah. It was a perfect week, perfect five days, and uh, they must be very happy. 
So this is the last part of the uphill. So the highest point on this uphill is around kilometer 49. And at the moment, they're about 48.5. So only a few hundred meters of climbing for this guy at this year's 2022 edition of the Swiss Epic. Once again, the look down to the fourth and then uh, the Kugelibahn. So we just had a chat uh, with the organizers here. So if they get help from the outside, from Muscovici, the official partners of uh, this edition, riders are allowed to get some help. They're not allowed to get some help from somebody else. So we did check the rules and everything went correctly at the women's race. So only their own box or some help from Maskebici from the official partners only help from this guys is allowed at uh, the Swiss epic and we're going we're going back uh, to Thomas to the chases uh, how does it look are they coming a bit closer or not I see any yellow jersey in front of us, but they are still pushing hard. So not possible to close the gap uh, in the last uphill? Well, let's see, but it uh, looks like really difficult. Huh? If the yellow jersey in front of us are pushing hard, um, yeah, will be will be hard. Now it's, it's now it's a long, long straight uh, climb, and I can't see any yellow jersey. In front of us, I think will be really difficult to close the gap. Yeah, and uh, the latest jersey, this is pretty close to the highest point of this uphill, so only a downhill is following now. But uh, again, we will see a sprint decision be between these two teams, between Buff, Megano, and Singer Racing. And we seen yesterday so that uh, the Singer team with uh, Simon and uh, Martin Frey. They've been in real good uh, shape for a sprint decision. They won the race yesterday in a sprint. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it's coming uh, down to a sprint for the second and third place at today's stage. Can be really interesting. Can be really interesting. We have in front of us, uh, in front of me, two good, uh, good downhill team. That will be interesting to see the, the last downhill. So, Dario, we're just hearing from Carl Platt that they have reached, they have breached the summit, the final peak of the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic, and the leaders of the race, Team Willier Pirelli, have got to that uh, point now where they're just entering the single track, the final downhill, the steep downhill single track. And, uh, Dario, you know these trails well, you know this section of the trail very well. Can you tell us what a little bit about what the riders are experiencing right now, apart from the white hot urgency of winning a stage? We're right now in the middle of this uh, Kukali bomb. Carl Platt here is doing it pretty well. Oh. <laughs> okay, I hit a. Uh... A root after a jump and then my front wheel slipped. But the trail is so awesome to ride. I remember it very well from last year. So nice jumps. There is and I see the guys so are enjoying it. So now it's probably a big relief for them. They're pretty close to the finish line. Yeah. So the pressure so Daniel, is done now. Daniel Geismeyer is doing whips. And uh, yeah, he, he's enjoying it already. Exactly, so the barriers in between and now back into the interface once more. They come down uh, to the Bolgen. 
and I have to the Bogen. They're passing by at the guys' lock. So pretty goes guys lock, uh, guys Meyer. Probably that's why he feels like a, like a goat at the moment. So. So beautiful trail once again in here. And uh, throughout the whole week, this team was chasing really hard right at the beginning into uh, Arosa on uh, Tuesday, already in the first climb. They made a gap between uh, the first and uh, the second team, so they showed from the beginning on which is the strongest team at this year's edition. Sorry, there's absolutely no doubt as to who the strongest team of the edition, the 2022 edition of the Spa Swiss Epic is. It is Daniel Gesmeyer and his partner uh, Fabian Rabensteiner, the Austrian and the Swiss dynamic. And uh, they are absolutely storming today and having a bit of fun on that downhill. We saw some tail whips and uh, Gesmeyer really already almost celebrating and uh, not wanting to uh, put a foot wrong at this point. It would be a very big pity to uh, to make a mistake and to cause damage to himself or to the bicycle. But uh, a consummate professional, Daniel Gesmeyer, well-known campaigner in mountain bike stage racing, having won multiple stages of the Absa Cape Epic, along with Ravenstein, and not necessarily always together. And though they've been rivals in the past, at the moment, today, and in fact all week, they have proved as absolutely one of the most exciting duos in mountain bike stage racing. Proving their, proving their point today really early on and gaining a large gap, over a two minute gap on that first ascent and keeping everyone at bay, all the arrivals at bay and leaving the trails clear for them to enjoy and to drive home their advantage and leave the others to chase. We've got a chasing group. We're looking at what the time checks are at that, uh, that last, at the top of the last climb. Singer Racing Team have gone eaten into that gap a little bit with Buff Megamo and the uh, gap stands at 1 minute 45 so looking highly unlikely barring incident and we don't want to say anything too early but barring incident it looks very likely that Pirelli Factory Racing will be able to hold off uh, the Singer Racing Team and Buff Megamo Willie at Pirelli Factory uh, just descending and navigating those beautiful single track sections on their way into DeVos. They have a flat section before they reach the final race village, but uh, the major part of the trails have been almost completed, all but completed. They'll be pulling onto the road in just a moment, and they'll be able to enjoy just a flat run into the finish, and a bit of relief, certainly, that they have covered all of the obstacles. Anything that the race has thrown at them, the 2022 edition, has thrown at them they've able to cope with absolutely perfectly and we look back in a moment certainly will be keen to see what Thomas Ditch has to say about how urgent that chase is with Singer Racing Team and Buff Megamo and of course looking back with all eyes at KTM Alchemist and Attitude having lost over nine minutes to the leading team but most importantly that eight minute six second advantage they had over Buff Megamo at the start of today's stage. We're looking right now at Jose Diaz pushing super, super hard on the front, hoping to maintain that advantage. But we do see up ahead a member of the Singer Racing team looking to make another early gap, hoping to get their, uh, hoping to get a second place on today's stage. The gap is no, nothing to be alarmed about. We do know all about that two minute gap the two-minute rule, in fact, that, uh, that stands the moment where the riders are not allowed to be separated by more than two minutes. And the rider up front, this member of the Singer Racing Team, will look for his partner to catch up. But uh, Jose Diaz pushing very hard just in front of uh, Martin Fry. And at the back of that very small chase group of two teams is Hans Becking in his National Championships jerseys, uh, jersey of Holland. He's a champion of the marathon discipline and they head onto the flat section having navigated the final section of single track now it's just a very flat run into DeVos and they'll be looking to keep maximum pressure down no doubt they'll sense that they have the third spot on overall podium 
in their grasp and we'll be uh, in touch with Carl in a moment and uh, Dario are you uh, are you talking with Carl what's the uh, what's happening on the ground right now yeah it seems to be a real quiet situation at the front so they're enjoying their uh, victory lap Carl Plot. Yes, <clears throat> we finished the downhill, they had lots of fun in the downhill. And now the last stretch on the tar. And uh, yeah, you can see the relieved faces. And they're enjoying their ride now to the finish line. It's only so, about four kilometers left. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a very comfortable situation for the leaders. So they know that they will win this year's Swiss Epic. They know that they will be at this stage, so nothing can happen to them. It's really comfortable at the moment, so, uh, but they're still concentrated. Yeah, they're still concentrated. I mean, you have to fight on the tar. It's uh, more or less easy riding. But yeah, that's, that's the way how you want to win a race. Exactly, so this is probably the best feeling after a long race to uh, have such a comfortable situation. You know situations like that. Yeah, I know situations like that, but I also know situ other situations. It's also nice when you're finishing the sprint, but uh, this is the nicer way. So now we're going back to the and the chasers. They're on the tarmac now. Uh, so it looks like it's uh, once again uh, both Megamo 1 and 2 with Singer, am I right? Exactly, now they are both uh, teamed together. Just before Simon Stivian make a small break in front. But um, yeah, now they're all together, or oh, two teams together, with uh, Hans Becking leading this group. And now it's Jorge Diaz leading the group. I think they are really pushing for the overall qualification to... So we just have a short break. We talk with the, the ladies' race situation at kilometer 37. It's a uh, efficient infinity injury with uh, Vera Loser and Kim Lecourt in the first place on second place. With a gap to four minutes and 14 seconds, it's the team the fourth closest. And then with uh, seven minutes and 19 seconds, in the back, it's the mountain bike pro merchandising team, Singolani with Janina Würst and Deborah Piana. So let's recap. Vera Loser and Kimlekort, they had a flat tire t five minutes ago. So, Stefan, it looks good for these two ladies. So the air stays inside the back tire. Yes, exactly. It really for for this couple in the front they are putting a, a high cadence and and really uh, working nicely together on the I think they are in, in this race in this year's Swiss epic they are the the best matching riders in the descents they can yeah really follow each other with uh, really tight on the wheel so it shows they also really match very good for for these type of racing and uh, yeah, it looks like I have a comfortable gap in the front and back to the second team in this stage, the leading team in the GC. So if nothing else happens, this should look good for today. That looks good for today. That looks good for the stage win. The fourth closest the women, they had a comfortable lead in the overall classification. So nothing can happen to them. We're going back to the man because only a few kilometers to go for the leaders. Yeah, Dario. Yes. I could, I could see the contenders coming, the chasers on the side, uh, on the other side across the road, but they are still, I think, one, one minute, one and a half behind. So still enough space and time to enjoy this ride for the leaders. So no more uh, risking. So as yesterday, the same last kilometer here through these beautiful houses in the forest. Do they talk to each other already, Fabian and um, Daniel? No, they're, they're not talking to each other. 
<laughs> they uh, they're still concentrated and pushing. I mean, the race is only over when you finish the racing line, the finish line. Okay. Line. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, most of them they're not so loud persons. <laughs> they're pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's right. But uh, close to me, these are the conditions uh, of. Uh, Ilya Pirelli factory racing, they're waiting for uh, for the, the winners and uh, uh, they're look, really looking happy. So now I have a problem. <laughs> Make some noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Once There's again, the this uh, last says, and now Karl Platt is uh, catching up. The leaders with Fabian Rabensteiner and Daniel Geismayer. Daniel Geismayer knows this feeling before. He already won the Swiss Epic. But I'm this must be a special one. Wow, about uh, so, so these two guys, they really had luck in last year's edition. So they had a crash on the third stage, I guess. Then they went out of competition. Now, for this year, they regroup. So, new partner for them, for Fabian. Now together on the last kilometer, together in a team for this last kilometer as a winner of today's stage and uh, as the winner of uh, this year's part. Swiss epic. The gap is pretty big. It's around now one minute. Back. Now they're celebrating. They gave dance. Now they're celebrating. Now they're celebrating. And this is a few from the Kugeliban from the last part of the. This is called the Balkan. Now they enter into this uh, grass part. Only a few hundred meters to go for this two. What an amazing what performance ride. of these two riders. Yeah. So they're only a few hundred meters away from the win. Enjoy, guys. Congratulations. It was a big fun to ride with you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really awesome to see you guys throughout the whole week, especially Daniel guys pushing so hard, and Fabian Rabenstein always uh, with his teammate. Look at this, Fabian Rabenstein, Daniel Geismayer, the Pirelli Factory team wins the 2022 edition of the Spa Swiss Epic. What a way to do it, to win the overall and to win the stage all in one go. And uh, the pictures will last forever. Uh, putting their name down in the history books there. Yeah, Daniel Gesmeyer has won this race in 2017 and Ravensteiner in 2019. And together in 2022, the Spa Swiss Epic title is theirs. And what a masterclass display of how to do it. And uh, really, really an unexpected move early on in the stage. Uh, we thought it might just be a tactical move, but uh, no, it was certainly, um, their aim was to take it all the way to the line. Clearly, they had a full run of trail in front of them. And we're seeing here, finishing now, that right in front of us is uh, Hans Becking. And uh, he's letting, rather letting the uh, second place on the second place on the stage go to the Singer Racing Team. No great celebrations. They would have loved to have won the stage like yesterday. But they will uh, no doubt be very happy with their performance today. And a fantastic performance from Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Just enjoying that camaraderie and congratulating each other on having finished the 2022 edition. And they will no doubt, um, just after the dust has settled, or the mud has settled rather, in this case, they will look back at that clock to see just where KTM finishing right now that there was word on the course that they were over nine minutes back which means that that six minute advantage they had has been wiped out but it all depends on what that clock says we'll be looking very carefully 
KTM Alchemist and Attitude. The Churchy and Tronconi pairing were 19 minutes back off Willier Pirelli Factory, but significantly they were ahead by 6 minutes and 8 seconds ahead of Buff Megamo. However, at the time check, we saw that it was all switched around and that advantage had been wiped out. But we will be focusing our attention now on the celebrations of Daniel Gesmeyer, notably on the front most of today's stage with Ravensteiner able to match him pedal stroke for pedal stroke. An exciting rider on the scene of mountain bike stage racing. Gesmeyer, a massively strong rider. And we heard from Carl Platt earlier that he was pushing out around right about 400, 420 watts on that climb. And for a rider of 73 kilos, that is incredibly impressive. And Ravensteiner able to uh, be a worthy partner of the massively strong Austrian rider. And that picture right there tells a thousand, says a thousand things, says a thousand words about how their performance was just so dominant over these last five days, winning four out of the five stages, resplendent in their Chiaviata yellow jerseys, the leaders' jerseys, with the Steinbock on the left sleeve, and uh, some celebrations. As you see, the rest of the riders pouring through. They'll be doing some interviews with, uh, with the press and just telling how they did it, how they managed to pull off that 2022 victory at the Spa Swiss Epic as we see the riders still tearing down on the gorgeous trails as they head into the final finishing run into Davos, the last race village, one of three race villages of the 2022 edition of the race. We were in Larks a couple of days ago, a loop around Larks, Larks and the uh, first, finish, first race village was in Arosa, three race villages and the riders having covered almost 360 kilometers and over 11,000 meters of climbing. They will have earned that finisher's medal as they will be re receiving a hero's welcome when they arrive in Davos. So Dario is on the line with the riders. We'll be hearing from him in a moment and uh, also be looking at that clock, that countdown clock, just to see how much damage Buff Megamo have done to the team KTM, Alt, KTM Alchemist and Attitude of uh, Shershi and Tronconi, they were 19 minutes back as we were talking about that, 19 minutes back to William Pirelli Factory. That is not what they're concerned about. They'll be concerned about Buff Megamo, the team on the rise throughout the week. Buff Megamo had bad luck on stages one and two and stage three and four, they made good. And stage five, they really made it count with some urgent chasing at the front. And we're just watching just a bit of a recap on how today went the stage five, the 58 kilometer stage with 1800 meters and 50, 1850 meters of, uh, of climbing. Just looking back just to see the contrast, of course, yesterday's stage. Yesterday's stage was pretty much rain throughout and with the riders coming home after a 100 kilometer loop, a 100 kilometer transition stage, beg your pardon, between Larks and Davos. Just very early on, we saw a move from the yellow jerseys, an unexpected move after a quick surge from Hans Becking. We then saw the consolidation of Daniel Gesmeyer riding on their Willier bikes and special bikes for the occasion. The red bike of Daniel Gesmeyer, perhaps denoting the Austrian championship and the white and, and blue bike of uh, Fabian Ravensteiner. He is, of course, the European marathon champion, a title we earned himself in the middle of this year and enjoying the trails the unique trails in the region and the network of trails around Davos and just uh, showing us what mountain biking in Switzerland in the Graubünden region is all about as they conquered the Alps these trails magnificently a unique and a real test of any mountain biker and certainly a test of this team but they were up to it they were more than matched their rivals all week. In fact, they, today was very much a, a point of trouncing their rivals in the early part, leaving the trails free to enjoy and, of course, to drive home their advantage. At one point, they had over a two and a half minute advantage, and that left them the luxury of enjoying the trails and just enjoying their final run in to Davos. We're behind Fabian Ravensteiner with the Bulls Media e bike of Carl Platt, a worthy person to be following this leading pair on the trails.
flawless performance from Gessmeyer and uh, Fabian Ravensteiner today, showing that they were absolutely the dominant team. No one to touch them. On stage three and four, they were matched pedal stroke for pedal stroke, but it was more or less a position of just defense. They could afford to uh, take it relatively easy and leave it up to their rivals to attack. But today, they wanted to do that final victory lap around the Davos trails and show the world, show the mountain biking world who the strongest team in mountain bike stage racing really is. On today's stage, stage five the, of the 2022 Spars Epic, Swiss Epic was a jam-packed day and the, exploring the famous trails, paradise, the DeVos single track and it was really the highest of the highlights for the riders and the weather played ball and we saw earlier some of the most beautiful views and uh, also taking in some of the legendary races, best loved trails and the best loved trails around the world, not just in this region and uh, the trails include the Panorama, the Fluela, Ischalp and Balkan trails and each of them unique but uh, one agenda was uh, on the eyes of the team Willier Pirelli was not necessarily to enjoy themselves but to do the job at hand to finish the job to finish the race in yellow and to win the stage Gessmeyer on the front most of the stage Ravensteiner matching and pedal stroke for pedal stroke Gessmeyer the winner of the 2017 edition Ravensteiner 2019 and finally they can ride together and win the 2022 edition and all looked very much in control as they navigated the trails around DeVos. The uh, Bulls Media e-bike giving a chance for the world to see just how magnificent these trails are. No doubt there will be plenty of FOMO and that's the idea. The idea is to uh, show the uh, world just how magnificent the region is and how fantastic, what a fantastic performance these riders here have put our team, Willie Pirelli, our uh, really the dominant team at the moment in world mountain biking. They uh, had a slightly disappointing Absa Cape Epic this year and no doubt making good. They then went on to the uh, to the Epic Series races, and in fact they raced in the Four Island Stage Race, and that was in April, shortly after the Absa Cape Epic, and they placed third, riding together and just solidifying that uh, partnership, and uh, racing with Martin Fry. In fact, Martin Fry and Simon Stepjohn, the uh, singer racing team, won the Four Island Stage Race in April, and uh, second place was the Buff Megamo team of Drecku and Cruz. Gessmeyer and Rebensteiner building their campaign, building towards the 2022 Swiss Epic and forging that alliance, forging that uh, friendship and that bond that has made them so successful on the campaign in the, uh, in the Graubünden region of the 2022 edition of the race. And you can see there Gessmeyer almost celebrating, perhaps prematurely, but uh, they were very close to home. This was the final descent, the final descent into Davos on the beautiful single track, on the flowing single track, the bermed, handmade, hand-cut single track. And they could smell victory and they could also hear the announcer in the race village in Davos. And uh, celebrations on the run-in on the uh, last final corner and Ravensteiner the first to raise his arm and Gessmeyer and Ravensteiner. What a pairing, what a display of dominance and of mountain biking. And how to do it? How to write? How to write a campaign, and to dominate the race? The Singer Racing Team, the pairing of Steve John and Martin Fry. A successful day out for them. Not quite the win they had yesterday, but Becking and Diaz. Great bond between these two, the Dutchman and the Portuguese rider. And we will need to look back at that clock just to see how much damage they've done to the Italian team, the team of uh, KTM Alchemist and Attitude. They were. Only had a six minute and eight second deficit to the team, but looking at the finish now, 
I'll have to check back at the clock just to see if they have solidified that third spot over. That was always their ambition to be on the podium at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. They wanted to win the uh, Spanish outfit, Becking and Diaz. It's a Spanish team, a Dutchman and a Portuguese, really the, the stronger riders on the team. Buff Megamo 2, Drecu and Marcelo Vergara, the backup team for the pairing. And the general classification will be able to get those results for you. Those, those all important, the all important list of just how well Buff Megamo have done today to eat into that advantage. We spare a thought for KTM Alchemist. They had bad luck. They had a puncture that they just, looks like they just couldn't quite repair. And of course, when you're off the pace, it's just so much harder when you're not in that chasing group, when you're not able to capitalize on the cooperation and the motivation that you have when riding with uh, with the, with a chasing team or a, a chasing group. It's, uh, it seemed like they were losing hand over fist on the trails into Davos. So these are the trails that can be ridden by anyone who enters the uh, next the 2023 edition. We haven't yet seen what the course designer has in mind for the 2022 edition, but we will be no doubt treated to some of the best tra trails of the Graubünden region. And entries open very soon. We'll be reminding any rider who would like to come and enjoy these trails, the iconic trails, and to conquer the Alps and just a Look at the official GC results. William Perry Factory, clearly a dominant performance from them. But looking down that list, Singer Racing Team solidifying that second spot overall. Seven minutes and 32 seconds down. But Buff, Megamos, Hans Becking and Jose Diaz have moved up yet another place today. And in the final stage, they have taken over that third spot on the podium from KTM Alchemist. Disappointment for Churchy and Tronconi. And uh, they are finishing at uh, 28 minutes and 50 seconds, 56 seconds down, just over a minute um, behind Buff Megamo. So disappointing day for the Italians and uh, really exciting day for Becking and Diaz. Their ambitions met on the podium of the 2022 edition of the Spa Swiss Epic, part of the Epic Series global portfolio of mountain biking races. And also all credit to Buff Megamo too, that's the backup team of Becking and Diaz being in full support. Not necessarily, um, they weren't necessary for the uh, Dutch pairing over the last couple of stages, but uh, it's always good to have a bit of peace of mind for uh, Becking and Diaz to have that insurance policy, the help on hand if anything does happen. Now we're going to be going down onto the line to hear all about uh, what the riders thought of today's stage and about... Uh, how to win a mountain bike stage race. So, I'm here with the winners of the 2022 Swiss Epic, Fabian. That was a fantastic last stage and a fantastic week. Yeah, uh, that was our plan. Our plan works uh, perfect today. And uh, we want to put the pressure on the first climb one. And so we go full gas over the first climb. And then we see the other teams were struggling and uh, we can go down a bit uh, we are easier uh, without risk. And uh, then uh, in the uppies we pushed hard and we feel good. So yeah, it was an amazing stage and an amazing victory here at this uh, Swiss Epic. Exactly, Daniel Geismar, it's your second win uh, at the Swiss Epic. After year, after last year, this is uh, probably much better. Yeah, of course, uh, also after my injury, now I'm feeling uh, quite good again. Also this week I, I had great legs and with Fabian, a great partner. And also a lot of fun, not only pain, and uh, I'm super happy to win it again. And also with the stage win today, well, it was really nice riding here. Yeah. So, uh, Jose, another hard day. That was the last day of uh, this year's uh, Swiss Epic, but uh, you're happy. 
with your race? Yes, we never give up. We try every day. <laughs> we try every day and yes, we try pushing the beginning, the stage. We try to start move early. Maybe it's a, a little bit too much in the first climb, big climb. But we try every time and uh, half stage for the finish. Uh, we try to push again and put some some high speed and give all and uh, we don't know what's happened now in the final we wait if but uh, we think we finish or we we want finish in the third overall, overall and we will see so Hans you're happy as well Hans, Hans is busy you're happy as well with uh, this year's edition oh. Yeah, I think uh, we made it to the. Oh. <laughs> I think we made it to the podium. Not sure yet, but yeah, <laughs> you have to fight always till till the last day, the last minute, and yeah, today it was again like like we used to to fight for every second and minutes again, and I'm just happy, mainly that Jose is back at the level, and we can race full out, and we have a good second team, and it's been an amazing week. Double fist bump. Double, double. <laughs> And we're back live at the uh, race in the women's category. We, the leaders of the day, in the highly dynamic stage today, we have seen drama unfolding right in front of our eyes, right in front of the eyes of Stefan Sam. He has been a witness to one of the most exciting stages we've seen in the women's category to date at the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. And exciting. Right now we have the, uh, the leading pair at the moment. This is Vera Lawser and Kim Lacourte, the Mauritian and the Namibian riders, we saw we saw the earlier the mechanical difficulties of um, of the, the uh, Swiss riders, and that was um, the mechanical. We saw that uh, the gear was caught. In fact, the uh, derailleur and the pairing between the shifter and the derailleur had uh, had been lost. And MTB Pro Merchandising's Unita Voist shifter was completely broken, so she had to stop in the tech zone. And we also saw some blood on the face of Bettina Yanis which leaves it up to these two, Vera Laws and Kim Lacourte, to forge ahead. Stefan, we would love to know what's going on on the trails in the women's category right now. Yeah, um, they're riding quite uh, comfortably side by side, just uh, probably <laughs> speaking the last tactics for the 10 kilometers mark as we're passing the sign right now. It's 10 kilometers to the finish. The an awesome flow trail down to the finish line in Davos. They are riding really well, and this this stage was really unexpected. Thought this morning, okay, it's going to be a Adelheid Mora at Bettina Yana's show again because they take, took the early lead, and then the drama happened. Lots of drama. It's really exciting to to see the women's racing. Well, great to see that. Uh... There is an opportunity for Vera Loza and Kim Lacourte to win a stage and we'll be having a look very closely at the time checks to see how much of an advantage they have. Probably it's likely that uh, Bettini Yanis and uh, Adelaide Morath will be chasing well after them. We would imagine that because of the mechanical woes of, uh, of Wurst that we would expect that team to be more or less out of contention for the stage win. So it's up to the two teams. The team in orange in the orange jerseys, the dominant team. And uh, we saw earlier the gap to the gap back from uh, Vera Lawser and uh, Kim Lacourte was over four minutes. So we'll have to look at those time checks just to see how much that gap has changed. Dario, are you uh, getting a sense of? Uh, of what's going on behind the uh, the women's the leading women's team at the moment? Yeah, it looks like the fourth closest team is uh, four minutes and forty three minutes uh, behind the leaders behind Vera Loser and Kim Lecourt, and then another gap of uh, three minutes to the third team to the mountain bike pro merchandising team, Singolani, Janina, Wurst, and Deborah Piana, and we see at the moment Vera Loser and Kim Lecourt on this uh, last kilometers and very uh, loss is pushing Kim Lecourt at the, at the moment so they're really going uh, for this uh, stage win so that's probably the only stage win for these two because uh, the week throughout the whole week it was the fourth closest chasing really hard we're looking at the uh, time check at the 42 kilometer kilometer mark they have passed that time check and they're heading up to the 50 kilometer mark that is the highest the the high point just before that final descent 
So they are very close to the finish of the race and with a four minute advantage on the stage, it looks like it could well be theirs. They have had a puncture. We saw Vera Laws and Kim LeCourt repairing a puncture. They put a plug in, they did all they needed to do, lost only 20 or 30 seconds. Stefan Sam witnessing uh, expertise in trailside repair right there. He himself has been an expert in trailside repair. But uh, it looks like that uh, the Namibian and the Mauritian could have the stage. We see the Mauritian in her national championship jersey. That's Kim LeCourt giving Vera Lorza just a bit of a shove just to keep the rhythm high. And they're sharing the load. They're sharing the efforts. Kim LeCourt, the stronger rider on the day today. And just showing how Team Dynamic plays a massive role in success at a stage race and certainly success at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. They really would love to win today's stage, a prestigious grand finale stage. And Dario, you'll be knowing, you'll be talking to Stefan down on the trails just to get an idea of, uh, of what's actually unfolded today. We've heard already the, about the mechanical woes. We've heard about the crash of Bettina, Bettina, um, Bettina Giannis. Do we have any more details from Stefan on what happened to the uh, pairing of Marath and Bettina Giannis? So Stefan, we're in this last cup uphill with the leaders. So di di did they know that uh, Bettina Janus and Adelheid Morat had, had, had a crash? And do you know some uh, insights about that? Um, I, don't, I don't think that uh, the leading women know about uh, the problems of the, of the GC leaders. Um, I also didn't see it just a bit, but, but it looks like that uh, Bettina missed the turn off. And then her front wheel uh, was sliding on on some of the loose gravel. Um, I on the on the long tarmac uphill, I I quickly could uh, talk to her, and uh, she said, "Yeah, everything is okay, and they are fighting back." But I really like the the gap is big. The two women here in the front, they are pushing hard, and it's only a couple of kilometers to go to the top of the mountain, and then. It's uh, pure joy down to Davos. Have you ever seen anything like that? Like pure drama in this last stage of the women's race? We had a crash. We had a flat tire. We had a, no, had a broken shoulder. Exactly. No, this is this is crazy stuff. Like you can have the whole stage race happening, nothing, and then everything unfolds on last day. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. A uh, problem magnet lying somewhere <laughs> on the track. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But that shows how important real uh, good race preparation is. So to think about everything, uh, to get the real uh, mechanic stuff with you, uh, to know your bike, to know uh, your partner, to know how to fix a mechanical by yourself. Exactly, 100%. And it's also about managing um, managing some problems on, on the track because, you know, everything kind of happen and then you need to stay calm and make the best out of it. Just like mountain bike merchandise. They were getting, even that uh, Janina had, uh, had the issue with the shifter, but she was pushing the highest gear through all those technical sections and she was never giving up and, and still on the, on the third place today. So do they get uh, some uh, insights from uh, from their mechanics if something like that uh, happens? So right in front of the race, so you get information or insights about your uh, your equipment on the bike from the technical side, because everybody has to fix it uh, by, by his own. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's what what we did in the in the early days of, of Team Bulls. We sat down before the stage race. We had a chat to a rider, had a chat to the mechanic. Um, okay, look, this is in the text. This is what we, this is the part. Do you need something else? What's missing? Um, do we need to practice, like changing a derailleur or fixing a chain? And we did the, all that uh, just before the stage race and throughout the year to keep the to keep up the practice, just not to be yeah to be lost in a in a situation like that. So everything looks good, at least for these uh, two ladies at the moment. It's Vera Loser and Kim LeCourt in at the front. This is real teamwork on this uh, last stage of this year's Spar Swiss Epic. Only a few meters to go till they enter the downhill. 
exactly and it it really helps to have a have a partner uh that's uh, where you know he's, he, she, he or she is there for you and can help you in in any situation even if it's just a small push up the hill it it helps you mentally so that's definitely allowed to push up your own partner up up the hill I think it's also allowed to push uh, the competitor, but uh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Nobody would do that. <laughs> Nobody Nobody would do that. <laughs> yeah, probably you're a nice guy, but you're not allowed to push them with your e-bike. No, I'm, I'm actually not allowed. No, no, no. But hey, I mean, they are professional athletes. They have been through these situations a lot of times, and they know how to to manage and, and handle it. Yeah, but, but but some of the riders, they don't even like to get pushed, so, uh, they, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was I was one of them. Of course, I had uh, some some uh, days in the stage races where I was completely or coming out of illness and I was not fit enough, and but I hated it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> Carl knew that, so he would push me. <laughs> yeah, you know Carl pretty well, so it, does, it was not that bad if he pushes you. <laughs> You have I, to say bad. I, I, ne so. I never want, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I never wanted that. You never wanted that. So probably it's even better if the rider in front, now this is Kim Lecourt, is uh, setting the pace a bit lower and then for uh, for the chasing team member, it, it's easier to yeah, just to s pedal at the, the own speed. It, it really de it really depends on the type of rider, but uh, they made it to the top. We are now heading down towards the boss. So this is the final joy ride back down and just keep concentrated. Don't risk getting down onto the Mammali Barn. Hukali Barn. No, Mammali Barn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in Bern's Barn. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Hercule so, is also nice. Hercule is also, I also nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I also like the term. <laughs> yeah. We had a, a lot of uh, Swiss words for uh, all the uh, YouTube and uh, live stream community. So we have the Hercule we had the uh, Alpen Pizza. What do you have more? Um. Yeah, only the bad words, I think. Oh, that they get filtered out. So the, all the bad words, they come from our German friend, from Karl Platt. <laughs> A lot of beeps. Beeps in the live stream. Of, exactly. <laughs> that was not a technical problem. That was Karl Platt. <laughs> So the efficient uh, interrestrial coffee team were also Kim Lecourt at kilometer 45 on top of the last uphill at the East Alp. They just went through enjoying their time in this uh, beautiful downhill in the force. Pretty fresh track, I think uh, about three or four years ago. They built it that one. Yeah, we have, we've been riding this one in the in the Swift Swiss Epic already. Was it last year as well? I think it was last year, yes. Now, really cool, really cool track. And it's for everyone. So even if you are a kind of a beginner, you can enjoy it on a slower pace. And if you if you uh, advance, you can just uh, speed up a bit. Yeah, as fast as you go, as hard as the trail is. So that's the good thing in in uh, trails, in the flow trails like this. Exactly. So which trail did you enjoy the most during the, the whole week, Stefan? Which trail? Oh, yes. can I say all of them? Probably I you just... can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, the diversity is so great here. Whatever, whatever you feel like for the day, you can ride. Like you said before, you take your normal bike, you go for epic cross-country rides. Oh, you take the gondola, you take the lift, go to the bike park, enjoy a gravity day, or take the e-bike, or whatever you want. It's just perfect trail conditions everywhere. Yeah, that's exactly how it is throughout the whole summer. 
and uh, even in autumn trails are amazing up here in this beautiful part of Switzerland. It's called Grabünden. So next year the Swiss epic uh, will be back. And uh, I think Neil, it's already possible to get a, a, a starting place for next year edition. Is that right? No, Dario, the entries open soon. They open in September. So we'll be putting up uh, some information on the screen shortly. Uh, well, after the, after the finish, just to how it's how to enter to enjoy the Alpine experience and to uh, have an opportunity to conquer the Alps. Um, registration opens on the 7th, yes, the 7th of September, and that's the for the 2023 edition. So riders who, who would like to take advantage of, of the race and, and to enjoy the Swiss hospitality and a full-service mountain bike stage race, five nights in Swiss accommodation, they will need to enter quickly because entries do sell out. So set your, uh, set your reminders for the 7th of September. Fantastic display of uh, mountain biking. We saw there earlier just uh, the riders of uh, Team Efficient Insure, Infin Efficient Infinity Insure, Rare Street Coffee, Avera Laws and Kim Lacourt reaching that summit, reaching that last climb of the day and heading down the flow trails. And we'll be waiting to see at what point Davos Kloster's women reach that, uh, reach that timing check. MTV Pro Merchandising Team Chingalani seem to be out of contention with that uh, very unfortunate uh, mechanical issue they had with their derailleur and their shifter. And um, the Vos Clusters women do have a very large um, gap, a very comfortable gap, in fact, um, of 13 minutes and 37 before the stage today. They have lost over four minutes on the stage today. But Vera Lorza and uh, in front of her Kim Lacourt in the Mauritian National Championships jersey, they are absolutely on a storming day. Every, every one of the riders, every one of the top three teams have had their bad luck. The team in front of us right now have had issues with their tire. They were able to repair it very quickly within a few seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or so, making the uh, rider in behind them following on the Bulls Media e-bike Stefan Sam proud, as he himself was an expert in trail side repair. Pretty much the aptitude of a trauma surgeon able to diagnose and spot and uh, come up with a solution and execute quickly. No doubt he was telling us earlier about how he would practice those uh, solutions, practice those uh, those repairs. And clearly Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt are well-seasoned mountain bikers, well-seasoned campaigners in mountain bike stage racing. And we've talked about the other teams also having their woes. Bettini, Bettina Yanis had issues. In fact, she was asking her partner to slow down. There was a bit of a gap early on we saw the team William Pirelli making a gap in the women's team, the women's leading team, the dominant team of the race of the week. Also putting some pace down on that climb and maybe putting Bettina Yanis under a bit of pressure. We heard her shouting at her partner. And perhaps for Adelaide Marath, the resort pony syndrome setting in, just smelling home and just putting the pace up just a little bit, not quite looking after her partner as much as possible. And of course, when that happens, when a partner is on the limit, that's when mistakes are made. So let's uh, get to hear from Adelaide Morath on the line when they do arrive, exactly what happened there. If it was an error or if it's just what mountain bike stage race is all about. Stefan Sam spoke about problem magnet, the problem magnet phenomenon. It does happen. Sometimes it never rains. It pours. But all fell, all the cards fell in favor of this team in front of us. Vera Laws and the Namibian, a multiple Namibian champion, time trial road and mountain biking. And she is being led to the finish in Davos by her friend and Mauritian teammate, Kim Lacourt. And they will be smiling already. They might even get a chance to hear the announcer calling their names right now. And uh, Dario, you're in touch with Stefan on the, uh, on the trail right now, on the road in, as we see Danny Schneider finish in the Masters category, cementing that Masters category jersey. But let's hear from Stefan. Dario, let's talk to Stefan um, about if the if we can see the riders smiling yet as they head into Davos. They are probably they're, they're happy to be over that uh, last uh, uphill. So uh, Kim Lacourt and Vera Lose, are they already celebrating, uh, relaxing? It looks more like uh, like uh, giving full gas till the end. It's absolutely full gas because it's like the uphill and with a nice headwind. So uh, Vera Lose is slipstreaming. They're not smiling yet, 
but they can smell the finish line. And what a great performance today of these two. Yeah, that's, that's really amazing. Even in a, in a dramatic race like that, you always have to stay cool and to stay focused on, uh, on, the, on the stage win, and that did it pretty well. Absolutely. It's only finished at the finish line. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Einer wieder Gandhi mit so Weisheiten. But it's true. It, it really sounds stupid, but it's like that. Huh? Even now, mechanical can happen, or a stupid crash, or something. Yeah, yeah, that it's exactly that. Right. And we've seen that in, in today's race, so as uh, I told before. Shifted, broken shifters, uh, flat tires, a crash from Bettina Janus. We have some insights on the Ishalp, on the, after the last uphill. The force closed this now four minutes and 43 seconds in the back. And then eight minutes and six uh, seconds in the back. It's the mountain bike pro merchandising team, Cingolani, Danina Wurst and uh, Deborah Piana. So it looks like a comfortable gap between the leaders and the second team. So stage win uh, for the Vera Loser and Kim Lekurt. I say now Stefan, <laughs> that they're going to win this stage. Yeah. Even yeah, if yeah, they're yeah. not at the it's finish line. The lead is too comfortable now. So if, and even really, if we're, we're not build. having big obstacles. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about the walking part. But it could at least uh, push bike. Yes, at least the push bike. So that was really good. I was a bit worried about the situation uh, after the flat tire that uh, Kim Court had, but they fixed that uh, flat tire pretty good and pretty fast. Yeah, they were, they were really, really fast and managing it really, really. Uh, at first, I think uh, the, the the air was uh, was still in the tire a bit, and they had to decide if they want to stop or not. But then, after a, after a second bump on the rim, it was clear that yeah, that was the go, and the only chance is uh, to just plug it and pump some more air. Yeah, so they're riding a tubeless tire with some uh, sealant in the tire. So all these uh, small punctures, they get fixed pretty well and easily and uh, pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, but it was a really rough trail with lots of like uh, razor sharp stones with, uh, with looking out and you could easily, you could easily destroy a wheel if, if you're not careful. Yeah, the live stream was so fast, Both all of the riders been so fast that we couldn't even figure out how rough the, the, the trail was on, 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 the way, on the way down. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even with my big tires, I sometimes uh, uh, felt, uh, felt the stone touching the rim. So perfect, only a few meters to go. Five minutes now, the gap to the second ladies, the fourth closest women, they just went through at kilometer 52 at the Bolgen. So now this and is pretty much the grand finale, the Champs-Élysées of the Swiss Epic for the, for the two, two women riders. They're making the way to, to the finish line. You want to sing with me? What do you want to sing? Oh, Chance Elysees. <laughs> 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 uh, this is I a mountain bike song. That's what the trail sounds like. The trail out of the Fliella was oh, ratatata. <laughs> that, that was that was definitely ratatata. <laughs> So this once again a beautiful drone shot from the trail down from the Ish Alp to the Bolgen. So team by team is dropping here in the in the finishing area. Says team Tavos, the man came in. 
shaking hands, everybody's smiling, everybody's having a good time, getting a finisher beer. What an effort, what a performance. Congratulations to all the riders. So coming back to the force after a fantastic week of five days of racing. And what an appropriate scene to see of um, a mountain biking race, that perfect, beautiful single track section as the riders head into the Vos. Uh, get an idea just of how much fun these riders have had. There's been challenges certainly along the way, but an amazing reward, that final bit of single track just before they reach the final finishing stretch into Davos. And a reward for a hard week, 359 kilometers of riding all week and 11,800 meters of climbing. In the Swiss Alps, no mean feat to have earned that finisher's medal. And be excited to hear from Dario down on the finishing line, just uh, the smiles and celebrations of the riders as they know they have conquered the Alps. But we will be focused very much on this pairing right here. A huge success for the Mauritian and the Namibian. They will have dreamed of a day like today. They have certainly had their fair share of troubles, but they have emerged victorious of a day of drama in the women's category. Drama struck all the top three contending teams, and Kim Lacourt and Vera Loza have prevailed. They have kept it all together. They've stayed patient all week, and they get that reward, that stage win, the hugely prestigious stage win in the grand finale of any stage, and especially a race as prestigious as uh, the Spa Swiss Epic. And they just are able to mount the stairs. Those tired legs just... Uh, the last little bit of effort they have to put in before they reach the finishing line. They will be able to hear the announcer by now. And they'll be buoyed by the spirit of uh, the fact that the prospect of winning a stage at the Spa Swiss Epic. In the back of their minds, we didn't see them smiling before, even though they were very close to the finish. In the back of their minds, no doubt, will be that plug in that rear tire. Just, uh, just praying on their minds just a little bit. Oh, there we go. They have a bit of a smile there. And uh, Dario, we're able to hear from Stefan. He can take us uh, take us through the emotions down on that uh, down on that last section of tar. So Daniel Geismar and Fabian Fabian Rabenstein, they started celebrating at this part of the of the, of the route. But uh, yeah, the ladies are still going full gas. <laughs> they are still still going full gas because they also don't know the gap uh, towards the back, or maybe they want to want to improve something in the PC. But Kim Lacord is still got full of the light tailwind down through the city of Davos, heading to the finish line. But we got a thumbs, a thumbs up and a smile from her face, so they actually know nothing can happen anymore. They will be winning the stage, the final stage of this year's Swiss Epic. And it's a really great performance, despite all the bad luck and all the drama that was happening today. Side. So they're only they're heading into the, the right hand side. We are entering now into the arena. The last couple hundred meters to go, avoiding the. Oh no, she's taking it straight through the muddle of mud, puddle of mud, <laughs> and I think now they can enjoy and celebrate. Congrats! Well done! Woohoo! They didn't hey, start to celebrate really? now! It's time no, to celebrate for this ladies! It's time to celebrate! What an amazing performance of these two! Winning the final it, stage! Unbelievable! Yeah, especially, especially in a stage like that! So much drama was in So Vera Losa and Kim Lecour! Winners of the fifth stage of the 2022 edition of the Swiss Epic. Congratulations to the ladies.
the gap to the second team to the fourth closest women was already five minutes and then another eight minutes at the last point at point at kilometer 52 eight minutes and 16 seconds Well, what a performance from the Mauritian and the Namibian. A dream come true. They dared to dream as uh, midway through the stage there was absolute drama happening and uh, issues afflicting all the top three teams and they dared to dream. We just saw in the background uh, Connie Lawser, husband of Vera Lawser, there to congratulate his wife. A fantastic performance from, uh, from the two and uh, just consolidating their efforts and uh, at the very end making absolutely sure Kim Lacourt absolutely full gas they would probably have known they had a very significant advantage over their uh, chasers but just making absolutely certain in the run into DeVos as they prepared for that celebration not a very long celebration but they knew when they hit the grass they had the win in their grasp and uh, congratulations from the rider that in fact followed them throughout the stage Stefan Sam on the Bulls Media e-bike bringing us the pictures, bringing us the amazing coverage from the trail side and knowing exactly what went on. It's uh, really an absolute privilege to be able to uh, get information from the, from the Bulls Media e-bikes right there as it happens. And uh, we certainly were treated to a magnificent display of uh, resolve and resolve on the, on the part of Vera Laws and Kim Lacourt dealing with that puncture issue they had and uh, dealing with it quickly and decisively they will know their seasoned mountain biking campaigners they know exactly how to do it and uh, that experience rewarding them on today at all the, all the cards fell in their favor and they were able to take the final stage the prestigious stage into the spa swiss the final 20, the final stage of the uh, 2022 spa swiss epic held in Graubünden, the race village of Davos, welcoming the riders, a hero's welcome for them. And we will wait to see just how far back the Davos Klosters women are. They haven't got to the finish quite yet. They still have a couple of kilometers to go. They had a five minute and 49 second deficit on the stage to uh, to the Efficient Infinity Insure Rare Street Coffee Team. Right about the 53 kilometer mark, 54 kilometer mark. And uh, MTB Pro Merchandising Team Chingalani had a terrible day out there with their mechanicals with an issue with the shifter. Yanina Voss saying that she had a crash through during the stage and uh, when they reached the downhill she realized that she'd actually damaged her equipment. So credit for them for getting back on the bike and repairing it. And all within the rules they visited the tech zone and got some trailside repair done and saved their campaign. The first three teams on the overall are home from the women's category and uh, Vera Lawza winning the stage with Kim Lacourt, Bettina Yanis and Delmarath on their way home as we speak with Yanina Voist and Deborah Piana about eight minutes back or so at the uh, last time check around about the 53 kilometer mark and uh, the standing by to welcome the uh, orange jersey wearers the DeVos Klosters women the team that looks so dominant for the last uh, four days, winning four out of four, not to be today with their woes. We'll hear exactly what happened on the trail side from Adelaide Marath, pushing quite hard on that first climb and putting Bettina Yanis under pressure. And Bettina Yanis having a bit of a fall, a bit of difficulties throughout the stage and capitalizing on that Vera Lawza and Kim Lacourt. But very much still waiting for the orange leaders, Chiavita leaders jerseys to enter the fray and uh, to confirm their dominance on the 2022 Spa Epic. Their lead never really looked in any doubt, although they have lost over five minutes, almost six minutes today, to the pairing of Loza and Lacourt. The team that they were really worried about are still behind them, Wurst and Piana at uh, eight minutes back. And now we are with Stefan Sam, currently with the, uh, with the overall leaders, the orange jerseys, and uh, riding in front. And I saw Adelaide smiling. They're really, they're happy about this. Congrats for winning the 2022 Swiss Epic. 
incredible performance. A little of a ditch today with so many stuff happening, but uh, really the dominant team over the whole five stages, finishing with the second place on today's stage and winning the overall. And Stefan, all credit to Bettina Janis holding it together and uh, a crash is never easy, an easy thing to recover from. Pushing, pushing hard, digging deep. And now the grand finale, enjoying the last meters. Stefan off from the media e by the Bulls media e-bike. We can see the celebration. They're uh, celebrating a second place on the stage, but more importantly, the overall victory, the, a repeat of their 29 victory together, in fact, at Alak Barath, winning together in 2019 with her partner, Bettina Janis, the all-German pairing, Davos Klosters women, exciting pairing. Before the race, we always thought that this would be the team to watch, and our uh, the, all fans, all mountain biking fans, and, the, and uh, punters, cited this team as the favorite team to win and they didn't disappoint they raised their bikes above their head uh, for that all-important finish that stage finish picture that will go down in the history books they'll remember this moment for the rest of their lives and uh, keeping their sponsors delighted with a fantastic victory and the champagne is close on hand as yes the traditional heroes welcome as they will taste that very sweet, that sweet taste of success and just being able to enjoy the moment and soak it all up at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. We're joining the, uh, the MTB Pro merchandising team, the team that were plagued by mechanicals, plagued by an issue with the derailleur, with the shifter in fact, you need a voice breaking her shifter but getting it repaired quickly losing eight minutes on the day and of course riding with piana they had an excellent week and they're here to cement their second position on overall general classification a fantastic performance go, go, from go, go, the go, italian go. and the swiss rider and they'll no doubt be celebrating they've lost not a lot of time there were not significant amount of time bearing in mind they still had a huge advantage over the uh, third place on overall general classification, Morza and Lacourt. The moment is theirs. They'll remember this moment. The young riders, the young Swiss and the young Italian enjoying the moment as they cross the finishing line. Having earned that finisher's medal and that spot on the podium, we'll be able to see just, uh, we'll be able to hear from them down the line. Dario will be catching up with the riders uh, momentarily just to get just to get a real feeling of how the proceedings went on the day. So we're confirming that oh, result. Geez. The uh, pairing of Vera Laws and Kim Lacord winning today's stage okay. in three hours and eighteen minutes and forty one seconds. A long another leave. long day out. Even though it was only 58 kilometers, the final stage, the final stage, the fifth stage of the 2022 edition. And uh, the Vos Klosters women coming in six minutes back, six minutes and six seconds, in fact, behind the uh, in efficient Infinity Insure Rare Street Coffee team. And in third spot on the stage, keeping their second spot overall, Unina Voost and Deborah Piana overcoming their difficulties today. Team MTB Pro Merchandising. Team Chingalani, all congratulations for all of the riders. Great sportsmanship between them as they have absolute respect for each other because they know just how hard it is to conquer the Alps, to uh, overcome the difficulties, the tribulations, and the challenge of covering over 350 kilometers, 359 kilometers covered over this week, over the five stages, starting in Arosa. Passing through the start, the start finish town, the race village of Larks, and uh, heading finally into the last race village of Davos today. Where we are today, bringing these images live, the celebrations at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic.
And in the uh, background, we can see the uh, another former winner of the race, Ariane Luti, congratulating the uh, winners and the protagonists of the day. Just to look back at the start this morning, slightly later start for the riders as they headed out on the 58 kilometer course. The last of the uh, of the stages of the five days we've been spending out here in the Graubünden region. An early move on the climb. The uh, pairing of uh, Bettini Giannis and the Dalai Marath. Marath just uh, putting quite a lot of pressure down on the climb, distancing their rivals and perhaps putting uh, Giannis under a little bit of pressure. See Giannis just calling to her partner just to slow down a little bit and to keep the pressure off. There's no need, there was no need for them to gain any more advantage. Just having a look at uh, if there's any reward for their efforts. We just have to look to our right at the spectacular scenery that has become known for the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. And any rider tackling this race will be treated to the most magnificent chocolate box views of the of the race and of the Graubünden region. Today's trails were highly unique. We saw the most we saw the most unusual um, unusual trails, the most unique trails we've seen, and it's all part of that. Uh, the trail network around the boss, exciting trail network that all riders can enjoy all year round. But uh, in the heat of battle, we saw the uh, the likes of uh, Bettini Yanis and Adal Marath being challenged by Wust and Piana. And after their efforts on that first climb, we saw the teams began to all come together and leaving the uh, top three teams on overall and the top three teams on the stage to contend for a stage victory, a prestigious stage victory at the Swiss Epic. It's uh, no mean feat just to complete the race and to win a stage. It is every athlete's dream. In the 2022 edition of the Spa Swiss Epic is no exception. As we follow the uh, MTV Pro merchandising team down the descent, we have been hearing about the difficulties that uh, Janina Wurst had had with her shifter and having to pedal in the biggest possible gear and with the, the whole system, the shifting, the electronic shifting system just having an issue after a crash into a fence in a burst having to wait until the tech trail side repair to address it and at this point all she could do was uh, pedal in the biggest gear and a little bit of uh, urgency at the tech zone all within the rules, being able to repair it by the official tech zone uh, partners and getting them back on the trails. But this left it all up to the Mauritian and the Namibian. A huge opportunity for this pairing who had the woes of their own. An opportunity for them to win a stage, get their name in lights. And Vera Loza leading the uh, Mauritian, Kim Lacourte, down the trails, down the tricky trails. This particular section, very rocky and of course playing Another big role in the stage where they too had mechanical woes. A flat tire, that is the rear tire of Kim Lacourt, knowing exactly what to do being a seasoned campaigner. We've talked about it before, it's all about damage control. How a rider and a team can handle the inevitable ups and downs, or the inevitable downs in particular, is really defining the victory, the difference between victory and defeat, and getting back on their bikes very soon. They were able to address it within 20 or 30 seconds and plug the tire, put a bit of air in it and just following the uh, following the trails down into DeVos with a uh, bit to cover still and uh, needed to consolidate that advantage and just to ride steadily knowing that uh, the riders behind them were going to be breathing down their necks but we had Stefan Sam on the Bulls Media e-bike to bring us all of the pictures and all of the live updates and all the information as to what was happening on a drama-filled day in the women's category with Kim Lacourt just giving her Namibian partner just a little bit of a nudge just to keep the pace high as they approach the final section of the trails, the last downhill trail of the race, of the 359 kilometer race, maximum concentration as they were able to surge on the final straight going into DeVos and just leaving it till the section on the grass for them to celebrate. We saw some smiles before the section, now the bigger smiles, and they are able to really soak up the moment and enjoy themselves, and a dream come true, as we said. It's an absolute honor to win a stage like the last stage at a stage race like this, the Spa Swiss Epic. 
and consolidating that orange leader's jersey is the uh, German pairing, the all-German pairing of Bettina Janis and the Delight Marath. Enjoying the moment. Didn't win today's stage. That would have made it 5 out of 5. They had to be content for 4 out of 5, having won the first four stages. Today was a matter of consolidating and enjoying crossing the line and saving the day for themselves with huge mechanical woes. Yanina Wurst and Deborah Piana, Team MTB Pro Merchandising, Team Chingalani as the uh, orange Chiavita leaders jerseys, wearers had a chance to celebrate and taste success. So we're live on the finish line and we have Dario with us who is currently with the uh, the successful riders on the stage, the winning women's team. Dario will bring you their words. So 2022 Swiss Epic is done and uh, a victory at the end of this stage race. Yeah, I mean, what? I'm getting emotional uh, because we had really a lot of bad luck in this year and um, it's my first Swiss Epic and yeah, we, we we didn't expect to win today, we just, we had nothing to lose, so we gave it all and uh, yeah, it worked. I mean, they're not super happy and uh, yeah, I can't explain how happy I am. You pushed really hard till the end. Didn't you know that you had uh, such a big gap to the second uh, ladies team to force close this? Um, we heard we had um, two minutes at, at one point and then I got a puncture, um, so we got a bit nervous and um, and then we heard we had four minutes, but you never know, like yesterday we had a problem in the last 20 k's. So we pushed to the end, even though the gap was four minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Kim Lecard, we're straight moving over to uh, Vera Loser. Vera, we're live in the live stream now. Uh, did that puncture at the, at the last part uh, yeah, brought you out of, uh, of your consistency? Uh, I think it gave us more adrenaline. <laughs> so we were shaking, breathing to fix it, uh, trying to fix it. And, but luckily it kept um, the air in and then we could just go full gas and finish. So it's beautiful to, to finish a race, a stage race with a win. Yes, it's amazing, especially it's our first stage win here. We started with a second place and then third the whole week and then finishing it off with a win is amazing. And especially with having such a great partner, yeah, it was an awesome week. Lots of emotions, but yeah, nice. Let's celebrate. Yay. <laughs> so let's celebrate. What a fantastic win today. So Adelheid. Four wins out of five stage and the uh, overall winner at this year's uh, Swiss Epic. Yeah, it uh, can't be better. Um, yeah, we won that race. Uh, happy for the day. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Betty was quite tired, so we decided more to enjoy that stage and make it safely to the finish together. So we are just happy to, to be here and enjoy the same Bettina, all good? Did you like heard something of a crash? Yeah, nothing serious. Um, just one second, I, took, I, I looked behind because I wasn't sure if we took the right turn. And I was looking for the signs. And in this moment, there must be a hole on the grass, but I didn't say that. I took the grass with my face. But nothing serious. I'm fine. You're fine. It was a big drama during this race. You had a broken shifter at the third team out in back. We had a, a flat tire at the front and then your crash. So through the whole stage, big drama in the women's stage race. Racing. That's stage racing. And the last day is, uh, you never can be sure that you, we had a gap, a comfortable gap, but we can never be sure. And so today the, the plan was to, do, to ride safe, didn't take any risk. No crash, no defect, okay? <laughs> a little crash, but yeah. It wasn't our plan to take the stage win today, it's just the overall end. You're happy about your overall? Yeah, yeah, because I had really tough times. In 2019, I won together with Adelheid. In 2020, I got Mama, Mom. In 2021, I broke my wrist in 100 pieces and now I am back on the top of the podium that's cool thank you very much that's cool and we're back live on the finish line 
and uh, the successful riders of the uh, 2022 edition of the uh, Spa Swiss Epic and all part of the uh, Epic Series portfolio of mountain biking events, the most exhilarating, rewarding and spectacular mountain bike stage races on the planet and the global portfolio of uh, best in class mountain biking stage races give riders an opportunity to challenge themselves and also to explore the iconic regions around the world a Q in, a, the iconic mountain biking regions one of these races one of the eight races is the wines to wales held in the western cape in the winelands of the western cape an awesome riding experience from lawrenceford elgin hermanus uh, founded in 2019 and uh, we visit many of the famous winelands of the region the fmb wines to wales route and taking riders from the wine from the wines of lawrenceford and elgin to the wales of hermanus we'll have a look at those images right now
the Helderberg Basin, the home to the start of eight days of the Untamed. This is the 2022 APSA Cape Epic, the race that measures all. This is brutal. I'd say hardest mountain bike race on the planet. You know? it brings out character and every day you feel all sorts of emotions. It's, it's incredible. You'd have to um, just sit it out and you have to bait fast, as we say in Afrikaans. And uh, yeah, you have to work with your partner, you can't do it alone. It's very hard to cope under those conditions and to keep it together riding wise and you know, mentally to see yourself through those bits. Take it step by step. Don't focus on what lies ahead tomorrow. Focus on on today. Yeah, Cape Epic is a real adventure. It's uh, it's more than a race. It's uh, yeah. Through uh, South Africa, beautiful landscape, and uh, yeah, it's 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 one of the best races. What a beautiful people, South Africa! It's really. The last days here in Stellenbosch, enjoying the trails, jumping uh, on, on the trails and just having a good time. Four weeks ago we weren't sure if we can come here because um, we are a super new team, low budget. We got, I think, maybe the last camper available in South Africa and now we are here winning the overall. It's unbelievable. together and accomplish such a hard mission and challenge was, yeah, it's really a special feeling. And to share with Songo as well is really, really cool. Second edition of the Andorra Mountain Bike Classic Pyrenees kicked off with a punchy 19 kilometer prologue. Day two was stage one, a phenomenal 42 kilometers with 1500 meters of climbing in glorious, beautiful sunshine. Then the Queen stage from Canillo to La Masana, 60 kilometers with almost 2000 meters of climbing, but two and a half thousand descents. The final day starting in San Julia de Loria at Natureland. The riders' favorite stage, 49 kilometers, 1300 meters of climbing, and time to celebrate. Andorra MTB Classic is una pasada. Tienes Andorra Ciudad con todos los extras para toda la familia. Pasar una semana espectacular. Y además, las subidas son duras, evidentemente, pero lo mejor es que todas las etapas acaban bajando. Y eso siempre lo digo yo. Tiene que acabar las carreras bajando. Siempre. The Andorra is magnificent. Do, do. Uh, ya has notado las dos etapas anteriores. It's quite tough. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely hard. Yeah, that's great. Nice descent. Super beautiful country.
creo que el aprendizaje es que si es que me pongo como objetivo y lucho y me preparo para eso, lo voy a lograr. Això és BTT, tot el més són tonteries. És un plaer. Creo que aprendo muchísimo de mí misma, que soy más resiliente de lo que pensaba, más fuerte de lo que me imaginaba. Eh, aprendo mucho de la naturaleza, que, que es una belleza, que nos da unos paisajes increíbles. Y, y nada, me encanta compartir esto con mi gran compañera Karina. Some spectacular images from the uh, epic series events. And uh, we're back live on the line 
as, uh, as we see the uh, riders pour through into DeVos, into the uh, final race village. And uh, we've had an exciting week of racing and we'll be cutting very shortly to uh, the results to see the, uh, the descriptive pros of just how well it's gone for the top professional athletes. And uh, we'll be seeing the stage winners and uh, of course the overall general classification, the prestigious Chiavita leaders jerseys being presented shortly. But uh, we're gonna have a look at just uh, what, uh, what the results look like after a long week of racing. We're live. We're live right now with the the e-bikes, the Bulls Media e-bike riders, and uh, it's a great opportunity for us to wish uh, presenter Dario a very happy birthday. And we've got uh, Carl Platt <laughs> ready with uh, the most enormous birthday cake hiding behind his back. Is that true, Carl? <laughs> yes, that's true. It's Dario's birthday today. Can you hear me? So big congratulations to Dario on his uh, 29th birthday today. <laughs> 29 years. <laughs> no, no. He, Dario is saying he, he doesn't want to be 29 anymore. <laughs> 49 is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just looking at the clock timing down over after four hours of, uh, of riding. The riders were pouring in, and just a note on the results two hours 37 is all it took for Willier Pirelli Factory Racing to reach the finish after 58 kilometers. The fantastic performance by Rabensteiner and Giersmeyer as they surged on the very first climb and took 1 minute and 14 on Singer Racing Team. That was a chasing group, a select chasing group of Buff Megamo and Team Singer Racing Team. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz finishing with the Singer Racing Team. And of course, really, their main aim was not only to win the stage, but uh, even more important was the overall GC. They were looking for a third spot on overall GC and William Pirelli asserting their dominance, making it four out of five stages. The race village of Davos, a scene of a hero's welcome and uh, activities for all. It's uh, very much a family sport here at the uh, Spa Swiss Epic with plenty to do in the race villages for everyone while the athletes head out onto the course and challenge themselves in the Alps. And we'll see shortly the general classification, the very telling results sheet of how it's gone all week for William Pirelli Factory Racing after 16 hours and 19 minutes of racing. Ravensteiner and Giesmeyer, the Italian and the Austrian, dominant into in this week's Spa Swiss Epic and Singer Racing Team. A fantastic performance by the German team, 7 minutes 32 down with Buff Megamo moving up another slot today. Yesterday they moved up a slot from fifth. Today they moved into the all-important and significant third spot. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz in 
third spot at 27 minutes and 10 seconds off. And unfortunately for Team KTM Alchemist Attitude, they had a puncture really early on. They struggled to repair it and they lost important, they lost significant time. And uh, with the late charge of Buff Megamo, they lost that third spot on overall. Disappointing for the Italians. They are young. They will be back, no doubt, to fight another edition at the Swiss Epic. No doubt we'll see them in 2023 to exact their revenge. And in the women's category, an exciting day out. One of the most exciting stages we've ever seen at the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. Efficient Infinity Insure, Rare Street Coffee, the underdogs of the day. And uh, the cards fell in their, fell in their favor today with Lorza and Lacourt really taking the others to the, putting the others to the sword. DeVos Kloster's women in second, six minutes down. MTB Pro merchandising team Chingalani after their difficulties, mechanical issues with their gearing eight minutes off the pace and fantastic performance and massive congratulations to their first stage whenever Lorza and Lacourt they'll remember this day forever we saw a fantastic performance from the overall GC leaders all week we saw four to four stages from Janus and Marath Davos Klosters women win the 2022 edition of the Spa Swiss Epic. Janus and Marath having 15 minutes and 34 second advantage over MTB Pro merchandising team Chingalani, Wust and Piana. Woes today, yesterday a fantastic day out, nearly taking the stage with Lorza and Lacourt efficient, efficient Infinity Insure Rare Street Coffee using 36 minutes on overall but cementing that third spot, a prestigious third spot on the podium. We'll see them on the podium now. We'll be able to gauge from their smiles just how much it means to the Mauritian and the Namibian. But the day belongs to the German pairing, Janus and Marath. Former winners, in fact winners in 2019, repeating that performance in 2022. As we watch the riders pour into the stage finish of Davos, one of three stages. We started in Arosa, we uh, passed through Larks, we stayed two nights in Larks, and we ended up in Davos in Graubünden. As we see the results in the men's category, the, the master's category, Stolbikes, Danny Schneider, Radsport at stage five. They won in three minutes and ten, three hours and ten minutes and six minutes ahead of their nearest rivals. And in third spot, Terrier and Roth, seven minutes down, seven minutes, 51 down in the hard, the tightly fought Masters category. And Danny Schneider, of course, we've talked about it earlier. He is one of the last Steinbocks, one of three riders who have finished all nine editions of the Spa Swiss Epic. Tremendous achievement, another tremendous achievement for Danny Schneider and for his partner Thomas Stoll to have won today's stage and of course cementing their position on overall wearing their blue Masters Leaders Chivita Leaders jerseys and uh, definitely another year for Danny Schneider to remember at his home race. Now you've been tuning in and watching the uh, 2022 Spa Swiss Epic and some of the most spectacular trails the mountain biking world has ever seen really is the home of mountain biking, mountain biking heaven and registration for the 2023 event opens on the 7th of September. Re entries do sell out so set your calendars for the 7th of September to be quick on the draw, quick on the click as they say to register for, the, for next year's event. That will be held in the month of August, similar to this month. And the riders will be again 
exploring the Graubünden region and we'll be hearing a little bit later in the year from the root course designers exactly what that route will look like. The three and more or less 360 kilometers. We're looking at the GC results of the Masters category. That is the blue jersey holders. Stoll Bikes, Danny Schneider Radsport. That's Thomas Stoll. And Danny Schneider winning the overall in the category of riders over 40 years old by over 52 minutes. 52 minutes and 19 seconds. Terrier and Roth and Bachmann and Hurleyman. One hour and 21 minutes down, 20 seconds. Fantastic performance from Stolbikes, Danny, Danny Schneider Radsport, the pairing, the bike, uh, the, the bike company founder and the former professional pairing up and uh, taking victory in this prestigious Masters category. Beautiful images of the town of Davos, the final stage location of the 2022 Spa-Swiss Epic. A glimpse of some of the Swiss hospitality you'll be staying in if you, do, uh, if you did enter the race. And a view of the Alps. You'll be able to see some of the riders coming in, having earned that finishers medal. The last section of single track, we saw the beautiful images of the swooping single track. And we have the results. On stage five of the mixed category, the man, the male and women, the man and women pairing of Sommer and Sommer as they finish today's stage in three hours and 39 minutes and 17 seconds. And uh, just a one minute advantage over Kruse and Hengartner. That's Cordan Lark's team, another local team, another Swiss team with the Austrians pipping them to the post. And in third spot, the another Lark's team, mountain bike romantic is Harschmidt and Stoltz from Germany. Two minutes and 35 down. Closely fourth stage in the mixed category. This is the scene that every mountain biker wants to see as they arrive on the finish line and receive a hero's welcome after conquering the Alps, 359 kilometers and 11,800 meters of climbing. Very tricky, very challenging, but immensely rewarding having ridden in one of the most challenging stage races around the world. And we have a look at the general classification in the mixed category, Sommer and Sommer cementing that overall with over an hour advantage over their rivals, Kristen and Turing, and Blanco and Espinoza from Croatia finishing an hour back. So just to, to note that this is a tightly fought competition today in the stage, but a very dominant performance from Sommer and Sommer, the Austrians. Scenes from the start finish village in Davos. It was a loop course today in Davos, four hours on the clock and counting. Riders still coming in. You can see the uh, state of the grass or rather the mud as the riders come in. This was uh, a difficult day for the riders, but not as difficult as yesterday. We saw tremendous downpour of rain, but today the riders retreated to blue skies. And of course, with blue skies come those tremendous alpine views. No doubt they'll be enjoying, enjoying them on the final stage of the Spa Swiss Epic in 2022. And uh, just another reminder to uh, set your clocks, set your calendars for the 7th of September. So you can go onto the Epic Series website and in that also see the portfolio of eight mountain biking stage races, best in class and most exploring the most iconic regions, iconic mountain biking regions of the world. And just a quick recap of the results on stage five in the Grand Masters category. It is the Norwegians once again, Oswald and Snurthammer taking victory, a tight victory over Girardi and Fair, the Swiss pairing Stolbikes, Fair Velos, 
and uh, Barty Bucher, another last Steinbock, finishing his ninth Spa Swiss Epic. Fantastic performance from the Swiss. And we're just catching a glimpse of the podium where the uh, top professionals in the men's and women's categories and of course in the other categories they'll be standing on the podium getting the name and lights we can see on the right hand side there in the red shirt that is Barty Bucher one of the last time box the uh, one of the riders to have finished all nine spa Swiss epics at the end of stage five, we're going to present to you all our categories, the top three on the stage, as well as our top three overall on general classification. To make all our presentations today, merci vielmals, a massive thank you to Reto Brenci, the CEO of Davos Klosters Tourism Association. We start with our Grand Masters. For the stage today, 58 kilometers in and around Davos, third position, Big Spike Holiday, Bertie Bucher, hans Jörg Gerber. Your second position on the stage, Stolbikes, Fairvelos.ch, Thomas Girardi, Markus Fair. And another stage win for our team from Norway, Terosa Consulting Fuel of Norway, Ola Oswald and Urs Nedhammer. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our top three teams in the Grand Masters at the end of the stage. Whatever you do, do not go away. Now we're going to be celebrating the top three teams on general classification in the Grand Masters category. After 359 kilometers with 11,700 meters of climbing, we present to you the top three Grand Masters teams overall. Your third position, Bixer Spike Holiday, Berti Buchen, Hans Jörg Gerber, our two epic legends. Your second position, and they're both Swiss Epic Ibexes, Stolbikes Fair Velos Punceha, Thomas Girardi and Markus Fair. And the two Vikings have conquered the Alps. And the winners of our Grand Masters, Terosa Consulting, Fuel of Norway, Ola Oswald and Oats Nedhammer.
And they need one massive round of applause, our Grandmasters. Congratulations. And to the Grandmasters champions of the Spa Specific, T. Rosa Consulting Fuel of Norway, Ola Oswald and Old Snathammer. Congratulations. Welcome to the top teams in our Masters category. At the end of stage five, the final stage of our Spa Swiss Epic Graubünden. Third position on the stage, Les Azulo, Christophe Terrier, and Ismail Roth. Your second position in our Masters category, the team Camille de Cavals, 360 degrees, Joan Febrer and Xavier Mascaro. And another brilliant stage for our stage winners, the all Swiss team Stoll Bikes, Dani Schneider Radsport. Gratuliere Thomas Stoll und Daniel Schneider. And please put your hands together one more time at the end of stage five. These are your top three teams. And we are paging Holger and Francisca from Lux Mountain Bike Romantic, please, for the award ceremony. After five stages, 359 kilometers, 11,700 meters of climbing here in Graubünden, these are our top three Masters teams overall. In third position, it is the team Skypix. And congratulations to epic legend Andre Bachmann with Andreas Hurlimann. Your second position overall, it is the team Les Azulo, Christophe Terrier and Ismail Roth. Your overall Masters Champions in the Spa, Swiss Epic Graubünden, Stoll Bikes, Danny Schneider, Thomas Stoll and Daniel Schneider.
And the little ones join the podium as well. Come on, let's give them a massive round of applause to our best in the Masters. Merci vielmals und gratuliere euch. And remember, at 3.30, we'll be doing the awarding of our APSA Cape Epic entries for those who have qualified here at our Spa Swiss Epic. In our mixed category, your top three for stage five, third position, the team, Larks, Mountain Bike, Romantique, Holger Harschmidt and Francisca Stoltz. Second position on the stage, another podium for them this week. The all Swiss team, Cordan Larks, Daniel Kresi, Corina Hengartner. Winners of the stage, as they've done all week, the Popaflo Erbe Ortsklub Freistadt team from Austria, Alexander Sommer and Sabine Sommer. Massive round of applause for our mixed teams and congratulations, Alex and Sabina. Your three best mixed teams at the end of five days in Graubünden, at the end of stage five on general classification. And in third position, the team CBZ, Asfaltos Willier, Alejandro Blanco, and Cristel Espinoza. Your second position after five beautiful days in Graubünden, including our Swiss Epic Ibexes, Stoll Bikes meets Dirty Socks. Marco, Christian, Lea Turing. And the green jerseys are theirs for life. Your Swiss, your Spa Swiss Epic Grand mixed category champions, the Popaflo Erbe Ortsklub Freistadt team from Austria, Alexander and Sabina Sommer.
A massive round of applause and congratulations to all of you. It's a brilliant, a brilliant five days on the bike in our mixed category. Danke vielmals. Merci. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you now our top three women's teams at the end of stage five for our Spa Swiss Epic Graubünden. And to make those presentations, we thank again Reto Brenci, our CEO of the Tourism Association Davos Klosters. Your third position for the stage today, MTB Pro Merchandising Team Cingolani, Janina Wurst and Deborah Piana. Second place in the women's category, and what fantastic racing it's been all week. Davos, Klosters women, Bettina Janas, Adelaide Moratz. And big smiles now as we get ready to welcome our stage winners for stage five. The team, Efficient Infinity Insure Rare Street Coffee, Vera Loza, Kim LeCourt. Fabulous racing from these teams today and a huge round of applause for these six women at the end of stage number five. And this now is the podium for our top three women's teams at the end of the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic Graubünden. Third position overall, Efficient Infinity Insure, Rare Street Coffee, Vera Loza and Kim LeCourt. Second place overall after five awesome stages, MTB Pro Merchandising Team Chingolani, Janina Wurst and Deborah Piana. And now I need to make it loud, please, beautiful people. In Davos, our overall winners in the UCI Women's Category for the Spa Swiss Epic Grand Bund in 2022, Davos Klosters Women, Bettina Janas and Adelaide Moratz. And there they are, your six best women on the day. 
And your winners, Davos Klosters women, Bettina Janas, Adelaide Morat. And our future champion joins us on the podium as well. Time for the final category. Three hundred and fifty nine kilometers, eleven thousand seven hundred meters later, we are on divorce at the end of stage five. And these are the top three teams on the stage. Your third position Buff Megamore, Hans Becking, Jose Diaz. Second place, singer racing team, Martin Frey, Simon Stivian. And your winners of the stage, William Pirelli Factory. Fabian Rabensteiner and Daniel Geismeyer. Please, a big cheer for our top three teams at the end of stage five. And the winners, William Pirelli Factory Racing, Fabi and Daniel. And our final presentation is our top three teams on general classification overall. And these are our top three UCI men. Your third position at the end of our spa, Swiss Epic Grand Bündin, Buff Megamo, Hans Becking, Jose Diaz. Second position. Singer racing team, Martin Frey, Simon Stibian. Had a wonderful stage win this week as well. Congratulations, Martin and Simon. Your Spa Swiss Epic Graubund and UCI men's champions overall. Four out of five stage wins. William Pirelli Factory, Fabian Rabensteiner, Daniel Geismeyer. Beautiful people, so meine Lieber. A massive round of applause 
And a huge congratulations to your Spa Swiss Epic Grand Bündin champions, William Pirelli Factory, Fabian Rabensteiner, Daniel Geismeyer. And that concludes our finish line presentations. We'll be back at 3.30 when we do the presentation and the draw for the Absa Cape Epic entries. Vielen Dank, Reto Brenci, you rock star. Well, emotions running high on the final podium celebrations in Davos, in Switzerland at the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic, the ninth edition, with a scenic and iconic backdrop of the Alps. Big thanks for joining us from all of us, and we'll see you at the 2023 edition entries open on the 7th of September. We'll see you next year for another 360 kilometers of challenging, rewarding trails in the Graubünden region of Switzerland. It's goodbye from us.